sensational, remarkable you, it's you, it's you, amazing, astounding, sensational. Welcome all you dumpster divers to the podcast that now maybe four of you are listening to. That's Ooh. right, we are back again on Movie Garbage. And this week we are doing a doozy of a film. Uh, as always, I am your co-host, lead host, whatever you want to call me, Ed Bobinchek, and I'm joined by my uh, partner in crime, Matthew Lewis. I uh, can't even be bothered to look up the line for the stupid asshole movie. <laughs> I fucking hate it so much. Oh, uh, piece of shit. <laughs> it's bad. Uh, but we are doing this because a good friend of ours, friend of the podcast, Chris... Decided to say something. I was going to say guest for the last two episodes. Yes, Pretty guest yeah. for the last two episodes, Chris. <laughs> decided to say that this movie was decent on its own merit. And because of that, this is all his fault. And he's back again with us here. And he just suffered with us. Hi, Chris. Great intro for me, thanks. <laughs> no problem, Chris. This is all your fault and I blame you. I, I, I want to I stress, too, that... I was getting shade before the movie even started, and all throughout the course of watching it, it was just nonstop shade. Not that it was necessarily undeserved, but just, I, I see this is going to continue. Yes, oh, it definitely will, for as long as this episode goes. Oh, and boy. we subjected not just Chris, but all of our friends to us. We have, joining us, the Action Toon Bros host, Ben Sturgeon. Hey, how's it all going? Chris, how dare you make me do this? <laughs> Everyone's here making this episode all because of me. I don't know whether to say you're welcome or well or shit. <laughs> or shit. Yeah, yeah. You can start I mean, with I'm sorry. I mean, this doozy of a movie. Oh. No, no, regardless of, no, whatever the case, I'm actually not sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Well appreciated, Chris, well appreciated. <laughs> we also have uh, artist for the Forgotten Minotaur King, now available on Amazon, mm -hmm. Tara. Yo, I'm very distracted by the rainbow keyboard. I have one, too, but I still always get distracted by them. Hell, yeah. <laughs> I keep getting told to turn it off, but I just keep forgetting, too, so I'm, I'm just staring at it all day, too. <laughs> you know what? You know what? It's, it's therapeutic. It's therapeutic. Oh, yeah. And we're going to need that after the trauma of this movie. <laughs> <laughs> trauma, Chris. <laughs> and finally joining us is the sewing maestro themselves, Kay. <laughs> Nice. I sat here for an hour and 44 minutes and lost every little bit of brain cell that I had left. <sighs> <laughs> I wouldn't even call this a movie. I'd call it more of a, hey, let's make a film together in a backyard. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm gonna say more of a, a, a very <laughs> shitty Wikipedia summary of a good show. Uh, <laughs> why did you put it, Chris? It's Don't make fun of Wikipedia Avatar, <laughs> It's Avatar The Last Airbender, the Chinese bootleg version. <laughs> I, he, that, you yeah. made us pause like, this yeah, sense of right alliance. and take longer to finish it <laughs> to tell us that. Them. Yeah. Justified. Justified. I was a good one. Yeah. Uh, but before we begin, of course, as always, when it's a specific subject matter, uh, you, know, you already know most of these people's opinions on Avatar series as a whole. But, um, well, from the Action Tune Bros, go listen to that too. Tara, are you familiar with the Avatar series and stuff like that? Yes, I watched it when it first came out as a TV series on Nickelodeon. Both mm -hmm. that and um, the first season of Korra. I did not finish the rest of it, but I will, and maybe I can listen to other people's opinions on it, too. Hell yeah. yeah. If only there was a podcast where they Some talked form. about it. Some way. <laughs> Some way. <laughs> okay. You yeah. familiar with the uh, Avatar series That's before rough, this? buddy. No, yeah, so, there you go. <laughs> so that's a yes. Well, all we know for sure is that she's familiar with the memes. Yeah, but then also, uh, yeah, of course, uh, Ben. Oh um, yeah, posted an entire series on Cora with me. So absolutely, first time watching it too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, it was a fun time. Not the first time watching this movie. Oh no, no, no. <laughs> heavens no. Oh. Yeah, I, I wish say, it was though. A good portion of us watched this in theaters back in 2010. Uh, I paid it. I paid to see it in 3D. Yeah, like a real sucker. Yeah, <laughs> that is the year I graduated high school. That's weird to think about. Yeah, it's weird. We, that's we a were two years after we graduated high yeah. school. I think well, two years after high two school. Two years, yeah, we graduated. Yeah. Oh wait, we were already in college and we went to go see this piece of shit. So. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And paid physical money for yeah. that. Yeah, possibly our own money. <laughs> so. Yeah, hard earned money went. 
uh, to the box office for this yeah, piece yeah. of filth. Well, I'm about to say, I didn't bother looking up any facts because we recorded this pretty quickly after, watch, after watching the movie, but um, like, I'm pretty sure it made it back a ton of money just from the Chinese <laughs> box office market, but of course in America it did do incredibly terribly. <laughs> I'm wondering how much it actually made or didn't make, because I mean, the opening numbers must have been all right. Uh, I, know, I know it definitely made back its budget and more so because of, I know it did really, really well in China, but yeah, it did like initially in the U.S., was really, really bad. Well, Ed's Googling that. Uh, Chris, what do you think of Avatar? <laughs> like, the, the series as a, as a whole, it's, it's great. Yeah, sure. Abs- <laughs> absolutely fantastic. Now, Ang or Korra? Oh, and, and or Korra. Oh, I mean, no, Korra. no, 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 no. I'm saying Ang or Korra. Which is oh, 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 oh. Or Kiyoshi or Roku, what's your favorite Avatar? No, it's Ang and Korra. The other two aren't as fleshed out. <laughs> well, well, I'd say Korra well, Kiyoshi is fleshed well, out. Well, yes. Well, Roku and also, anyone who says Roku... Is wrong. Yeah, I know anybody who says that. Uh, I can't remember his name. I literally read the Kyoshi book about the the um, the water avatar before her. He's pretty cool. Yeah, he's done some weird stuff. But yeah, still better. Favorite avatar. Okay, so uh, full disclosure, uh, my only exposure to like the Avatar universe and lore has been through the series, That's uh, like that Avatar and Korra. Like I, I've not read any. I assume that there. I know there are comics. But I believe that there are light novels as well. I want to say. I don't know. Possibly. Oh no! Wait, there's, there's uh, actual two Kyoshi books, like no book novels. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. I haven't, I haven't, uh, uh, I haven't read those. At all. I don't expect so, you to. So <laughs> really, like, so really, the the only avatars that I'm aware of that have gotten like any sort of of like fleshed out uh, stuff to them <laughs> is uh, Aang, Korra, and I'd say arguably also Avatar One, at least from oh, from yeah, the Korra yeah. series. Wong got a lot of stuff. Wong got a, a pretty decent uh, like story exposition. And his, his, like his origin story is 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 pretty <coughs> compelling to me. I think. Mm-hmm. Hmm. But I mean, as cool as he was, it's gonna come down to to Aang or Korra, and I'm not quite sure who I like more. Mm. They're both they're both they're both pretty good in their own right. I was gonna say yeah. Me and Ed definitely made our cases for liking Korra a hell of a lot more. But that's just our opinion. Oh, that Ed's giving him an angry stare. Ed, <laughs> Ed, what's the angry stare for? Here, let me let me. Calm everyone down. Uh, Avatar Kyoshi is the best one ever, and mm-hmm, no one mm-hmm. can back me down on that because you know what? Queer representation. Hell yeah! Hell yeah! Absolutely. Cora correct. also checks the boxes. Can you only ever watch season one with me? Yeah, uh, yeah. So that's a spoiler. I, I know, shut the hell up. <laughs> I know. I know that Cora gets with the yeah, yeah. and I'm kind of mad that they. The only way that they were able to allude that the two of them were together was through the imagery of. Two of the other characters getting married, and then the two of them walking into the spirit world together. Yeah, they did get their uh, a full comic afterwards. The, yeah, they, they had to for that. fight yeah, for, fight for that. that, and yeah, they talk. had to do that last season exclusively online because it was such a new thing at the time. Yeah, it so was really epic some schedules. some younger viewers nowadays watch it and they don't they don't understand what a big deal it was yeah. and how people literally cried when that episode aired. Absolutely, we uh, talked about on the Cora episode, our finale, <laughs> that like yeah, like Cora. Kind of, for lack of a better term, like crawled so shows like Steven Universe, She-Ra, and yes. other things could run with this kind of representation. But it and did like it was a huge, the yeah, yeah, it was a huge start for them from that point on. But oh, yeah. yeah, and to summarize my thoughts on it from what you can hear on the Action Tomb Bros finale of Korra, uh, I actually thought that that would have been more. It was more impactful to have them just hold hands that way than actually kiss. Because to me, in that moment, they were finally discovering their feelings. They were discover, and they kind of had that that realization. And rather than a kiss, which is a very intimate thing, you know, that you do with someone like that. I don't know. I just, I, to me, yeah. the hand holding felt like, hey, are you into this the way I am? Yes. It was just an unspoken physical touch yeah. that was more, to me, more intimate than a kiss would have been. I think it's because you're reading the symbolism of I consciously take your hand, and hands yeah. are. Hands have um, uh, a very strong metaphor. That's what you do. That's what you create with. There's a reason why the famous, um, I think it's actually Sistine Chapel painting of uh, God yeah, and man that. touching hands. And uh, the imagery of the hand is that's what you create with. That's what you decision make with. So the That's imagery, also part of wedding vows. like Yes. Yeah, and traditional hand fasting. Yeah, so 
it's a strong imagery. I do wish they could have made it a bit more explicit. Maybe have them like lean into each other. Yeah. I'm almost leaning into Chris. Sorry, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> My yeah. fiance is across the room. Yeah, yeah. If they had, the, they they said multiple times that like they wished they could have made it more explicit over the course. We're getting too caught up on Korra because it's a fucking fantastic series. It but is. But, but but we should be talking about the original Avatar, which is. Better than this piece of shit movie we're actually supposed to be fucking talking about. Yes. But uh, um, yeah, Korra's absolutely wonderful. We should probably do a recap episode with you and Kay on Terra again because just to talk about because uh, it's a fucking great show. Actually, we'll talk about it on the Shira. Never mind. Uh, <laughs> ben, you're sitting over there. You're a fucking co-host. Speak out. What the fuck do you think about Avatar? <laughs> All right. Let's uh, also limit this. All right, we're gonna. So we're gonna end this now. Like you said, we're gonna take Korra out of our conversation here. <laughs> oh yeah. She's too interesting. She's yeah. too interesting, <laughs> and she's answer? the best Avatar, <laughs> and she cannot be any more involved with this garbage. Yeah. Um, Korra. Oh no, Korra. <laughs> Korra. No. Nope. I'm the host. Thank you very much. Um, ben. Yeah. But, tr- trust me. I know, I know this is about Avatar The Last Airbender. And uh, yeah, Avatar The Last Airbender, fantastic. Mm-hmm. Very colorful characters. Very, uh, you know, very energetic. Very lively. You know, very uh, emotional characters. Very emotional scenes, too. And then there's uh, this guy named M. Night Shyamalan who's like, I can make a live action version of it. And, uh, well... You're going to find out in this episode just how yeah. well that went. I was going to say, it's well documented now, but like, yeah, originally it was his kids watching the show, and they very much enjoyed it, and then I think he he possibly sat down and watched it with them, and also, of course, really enjoyed it, and at the time, I don't think he had the bad reputation he has now, so he was able to go to Paramount Nickelodeon and get this thing greenlit um, on that, which is a good motivation in the first place, you know, your kids are a fan, you're like, oh, this actually is really, it should be adapted, it's really good, it should be hit, you know, get to more people or whatever. But then, of course, if you're yeah. familiar... Well, yeah, I'm about to say, before you can start the actual fucking description of the movie, oh, we have to go on to the actual director, M. Night Shyamalan. Um, uh, by the way, I'm I think he much, had... I, was, I want to say real I'm quick, good. I think he had a bad reputation because the movie, the three movies that came out before this, mm-hmm. 2004, The Village, oh, 2006, wow. Lady in the Water, Yikes. 2008, <laughs> The Happening. Oh my god! Yeah, Science of 2002, yeah. Unbreakable was 2000. So I think his goodwill had definitely plummeted at this yeah, point. Yeah, I was gonna say, how familiar are you guys with M Night as a director? I'll start with Ed, since uh, he's the first in line. He's the host of this damn show. Ah, uh, yes, I am. I have also quite actually. Um, Leanne and I actually watched um, not Unbreakable. We watched uh, Glass and Split not too oh, long Jesus ago. Christ. I thought they were not that bad. You like Glass. I mean, I didn't love it, but I thought it was interesting the way the, it kind of connected into and, it. Yeah, but it, that was fucked up. But they... I mean, that was, it was very yeah. fucked up. But I, like, I, I did some good things. That was a good twist, I will say, too. Yeah, yeah. It was very, very... uh what a twist. Sad. Yeah, we see... <laughs> <laughs> I in the background mouthing how terrible it was. <laughs> yes. Um, but yeah, do you have any like actual liking of or any recent uh, things like uh, The Visit or uh, I just saw... Well, I think that I did like... Old... We saw The Visit together. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I that liked was The Visit. Good. That, that was, was definitely good. There was some real, like, you know, horrible imagery in that, in that movie that messed you up. Ugh. Some fucked up Pretty shit. shitty ones. <laughs> hey! Uh, uh, diaper poop, in the face. Yeah, poop diaper. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, do you, uh, what's your favorite Shyamalan mover? Um, Looking at them here, <gasps> probably, I mean, there's some bad ones. After Earth, they considered a Shyamalan Jesus Christ, movie. that was hilarious. <laughs> Wait, oh, wait. God. Battle Earth. No, no, no. No, no. Uh, no. After, after Earth. Earth. After Earth. With, the, with the Will Smith. And with James Will Smith. Smith. And okay. Yeah. Sorry, I, I thought I heard, like, I, yeah, I heard a different one. Battlefield Earth is uh, hilarious. I will, yeah. I, I would, I'm <laughs> no, looking at this list here. The only one that I really kind of thought was very, very good was Signs. I I like Signs. Oh, yeah. It really? had some weird, it had some good moments. You know, it was dumb, but it was fun and it knew it was dumb in a way. Mm. I think his his strength is actually smaller, tight casts. The more the casts grow, the more grandiose it gets, I think the worse it gets. I mean, Visit's a perfect example. I oh, mean, yeah. that's a handful of actors yeah. in a small, secluded space. Literally four people just in a house. Sixth Sense, I've never seen it, but I believe that was also a smaller cast, oh, right? Yeah. Um, and was, Science Again is a That was the cast. one with Ailey Joel Osment and Bruce Willis, I think. Right? Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, of course, his signature twists and whatnot. Um, I was gonna say of my personal favorites, uh, the one he just made old was a very, very creepy, very, very upsetting movie that really affected me just because I have you know older parents. 
But that movie was, like, really bizarre and scary. The whole movie is a really, really, it's really, really good horror movie. About, you know, people on the beach and they get older as they go along. And there's a whole bunch of other levels to it. Of course, a whole bunch of M. Night Shyamalan twists. But that movie was really good and I really enjoyed it. Of course, as you see with all of his shit, absolutely horrible acting. <laughs> Everyone was very... Uh, like, actors who are actually, like, award-winning and very good at their job are directed so horribly and so flatly and so awkwardly it's, that it's it makes surprising. all this stuff really bad. <laughs> I mean, it is surprising just how bad the acting is in his films. I mean, the happening. Yeah. There is zero emotion on anybody's faces. What? No. Wow. <laughs> okay, uh, it's just bad. so remind me. Uh, it was happening, or which which movie was the one where, like, it starred uh, Zoe Dejanel, and it was about like Mark plants. Are... Yeah, that was the happening. That's the happening. Uh, the, the, the one where the, the plants are attacking and like, the trees are killing <laughs> people, making attacking. people kill themselves. Yeah, yeah, the <laughs> Spoiler alert! Now you don't need to watch that. Piece that lady's of trash. Just, like standing in a lion cage, like just like with her arm out in a lion, like rips her arm off. She's just standing there, like. Ugh. <laughs> also, <laughs> as, as a lion, John Leguizamo gets his head under a lawnmower. <laughs> it's, uh, all, it's, it's, it's all real stupid. It's super bad. <laughs> By the way, so fun fact about the last Airbender. Oh, we're a, never gonna get this fucking movie. <laughs> it had a budget of hundred and fifty million dollars. Mm. Does anyone want to guess how much it made? I was just gonna say I want hundred and fifty million dollars. You could have just given it to me the whole yeah. time. I'm gonna yeah. a better movie uh, right now. I guess it's gonna be like <laughs> it made one hundred million dollars. Hundred uh, million. Uh, yeah, I was gonna say I, I'm thinking like two hundred and fifty mil. Oh well, no, <laughs> not the computers. <laughs> Sorry. Well, that's gonna be uh, <laughs> so one hundred. You said two. Two fifty million. Two fifty. Uh, I'm gonna say like a ridiculous like 500 million. 500 million. I was gonna go 300 because uh, we already had spoilers of uh, I made uh, back budget uh, when it went to China. I don't know so about opening weekend. Said 300 box office. What do you think, Kaylee? How much do you think this that movie made in the box office? <laughs> An abhorrent amount back. It should not deserve any of that money. <laughs> I'm not disagreeing with that. <laughs> yeah. All right. So we had 100 for Chris, 250 for Ben, 500 for yeah. Matt. 300 for Tara. Congrat- and Kaylee said, fuck this movie. <laughs> Kaylee technically wins. Yeah. Um, but the first ever guess the box off it, but box... Blah, 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 blah. blah. Yeah. The yeah. box... Yeah. Uh, yeah. Shut up. Yeah. That's all, folks. The, the first ever box office guess award goes to Tara. Yeah. This film made $319.7 million oh. in the box office. Ugh. So it doubled its money. Give everyone their money yeah, back it actually on. <laughs> All those people, that, that money I'm going to guess was like an almost exclusively people coming in on opening weekend having no idea what the fuck they were getting into. Probably. <laughs> yeah. Also, 3D films and like that, that really does oh, yeah, affect it. That was a trend in the 2010s. I forgot how much of like oh, a, yeah. everybody yeah. was seeing movies yeah, 3D. in 3D just in because 3D. of Avatar. Uh, ironically, because yeah. of Avatar. I was the movie, say Avatar. The reason yeah. this movie is called The Last Airbender, not Avatar The Last Airbender, because James Cameron's Avatar was technically in production before the show, so they were able to get the name for the movie. Pocahontas yeah. with blue skin. Yeah, a yeah. terrible movie. Yeah. One of these days he's going to make those sequels, everybody. We, by the way, I feel Avatar like we need to do a- the Avatar movie on this I podcast. I don't want to do it. I fucking hate that movie. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we need to do it. But, uh, yeah, well, we're, also, we're, we're almost you 20 get, minutes in. You want to get some controversy. Let's talk about that film, oh, man. Well, Let want, me I tell you one game for Blockbuster at that time. People pre-ordered the super special edition Blu-ray of that film. Oh, God. Yeah. They <laughs> well, spent $40. And everything. Yeah. $40. $40 to $50 on that we're movie. We're talking about the Blue People film? Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We're never you know, the funny thing about that is there were some small concepts in there that, on their own, were decent nuggets that could have been explored, but... They shoved it into a very, they shoehorned it into a very stereotypical plot line mm-hmm. and didn't explore some of the more fun concepts that they brought up in this, in that world. So that's what made it so disappointing to me. Yeah. Yeah. Surprise. This is, we're going to shit on Avatar more. I know, but to say, well, let's keep doing it. I, I just recently found out, like, the other day I listened to a podcast that the term unobtainium is an actual real term used, like, in the, uh, like, 20s and 30s for, like, uh, some kind of resource that you're looking for. So it's an actual, actual term, unobtainium. So I wasn't just something stupid made up for that dumb movie. Um, <laughs> and, and our continuing process, 20 minutes into this goddamn podcast, I'm talking about the shitty piece of shit movie. Uh, what do you guys think of Shyamalan? I'm <laughs> and Tara, gonna be, Chris. <laughs> I, I'm going to be the unpopular opinion because I actually, of the M, the M. Night Shyamalan movies, I actually kind of enjoyed Lady in the Water. You're a maniac. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, look, look. Hey, I, know, I know he's the host, but coming from the co-host, who has a friend, who is a big Nicolas Cage fan. I mean, 
What's, I don't see the comparison <laughs> oh, no, 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 I'm no, sorry, no. wait a minute. Are you trying to compare M. Night Shyamalan, the hack director, <laughs> to Nicolas Cage? <laughs> the hack actor. The, I'm sorry, oh, God. the what now? <laughs> We're gonna hey, go to back on point. First on podcast. Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> We're about to spend about 40 minutes talking about <laughs> Nicolas Cage. <laughs> We're thinking this fucking movie, You can't guys. see it, but I am stirring this pot bad. No, all right, back on, back on, uh, on The man who, part. in an entire film, kicked robotic animatronic ass without uttering a single mother fucking <laughs> word. Just play the FNAF games. <laughs> hey. I know this, is, this may be odd, but I do love Nicolas Cage and Mandy. Mandy's wonderful. Yeah. If you've seen that, I would not suggest watching the whole thing together because it is an acid trip. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. if you watch it in like pieces, it, it's a very pleasant movie. Mm-hmm. And in reality, I like Nicolas Cage too. I mean, Color Out of Space is one of my oh, favorite yeah, ones. Of but back on subject, trust me, I know there are flaws mm-hmm. with Lady in the Water. I'm not saying it's a perfect movie. Madam Narf. However, <laughs> the Narf needs to get back to the Waterland. However, however. <laughs> I remember trying to like trying to understand the concept and what he was trying to go for. Mm. An odd, an odd also, fairy tale esque <laughs> kind of thing. Yes, I'm not saying it was good. Again, it, it's kind of hard uh, unless you're saying like The Sixth Sense or Unbreakable. It's kind of hard to say any M Night Shyamalan movie was. I'm actually surprised you said Signs was good. I did not find that good at all. But to See, each their own. I've actually never seen Unbreakable, and I have never seen The Sixth Sense, and I can never watch The Sixth Sense because. It's the Star Wars problem. I mean, for its time, I, you know, the Luke, I'm your father, the I, you know, oh, he's actually the dead person. At the time, I could understand that being an amazing twist. Yeah. But at this point, I'm coming into it to the point where it, that holds no relevance to me because I'm going to see the film and knowing that going into it. I mean, it's going to be, it's going to be, ironically, you know, we grew up watching Marvel grow in the cinematic universe. Infinity War, I mean, that portal scene for me at least, is, I mean, it's it, it's infamous. It's amazing. Yeah, it, you know, it, it hit all the right notes. It's a yeah. culmination of over, like, a decade of films and cameos and all these actors coming together for that perfect moment that that's not going to get achieved to people who can spend a weekend watching the whole film. Yeah, I was going to say, you also cannot watch fucking Unbreakable after seeing fucking Glass. <laughs> yeah, no, that shit, that movie's fucking ruined. <laughs> don't even think about fucking Unbreakable now. Yeah, I don't know. Really, dude? What happens in goddamn glass? You cannot watch Unbreakable. But no, no spoilers. That's another conversation. Yes, uh, it is. Tara, you're about to fall asleep. What's happening in this movie? <laughs> oh, no, I'm trying to breathe because I have a lot of congestion today for no apparent reason. No. Um, what do you think about Shyamalan? Uh, Shyamalan has a weird sort of... It's almost like he finds potential and he has these some story ideas that have potential. And then... He tries to take it so seriously that he instead goes full ham. Yeah. So then it's this weird... It, you can't quite take it seriously, but it's not deliberately a comedy either. So you watch it, and there, I've seen Lady in the Water. There are moments of it that I've liked, and then there were moments of it where I was like, okay, you're pushing too hard, buddy. Stop. Mm-hmm. Back off. Some ideas can't work. And um, the thing that Ed was talking about, some things don't have the same impact to different generations... There's actually, um, in film class, I had to take, um, uh, in my film history class, I had to take, we had to watch uh, Metropolis. Have you ever heard of it? Black nope. and white in the 30s? I've seen some it of it, set yeah. the majority of the beats that you see in modern sci-fi to the point where, without actually knowing how it ends, you could predict how it ends. Mm. Oh, yeah, you're talking about the, the silent German, I think it was a German yes. movie. Yeah. Yes, okay. in the 30s, I believe. Like, it was, you, you could pretty much predict the way it ends because we still use those beats to di- to this day. But the problem is, when you're looking back, you're like, man, this is boring and predictable. But it set those stereotypes. Mm-hmm. It made sci-fi as film. It yeah. defined sci-fi as film. So, um, there are some movies that maybe at the time, like you said, with, like, The Sixth Sense... Yeah, to us, it's going to be super... Some of those twists are going to be super obvious, but back then they might have been groundbreaking. One of my problems with Shyamalan and twists is it feels like he's throwing darts with a blindfold on. There is an art Mm -hmm. to the twist. One way I saw it recently put was um, the twist has to answer the initial question the story is trying to 
compose. Uh, I have a minor in creative writing, and one of the things that you learn, and I have a book on it, is every story poses a question. And the twist at the end, the example I saw used was Planet of the Apes. The question is, is mankind inherently violent? The twist at the end is you see the Statue of Liberty half buried. So it's a twist because it implies, yes, mankind is inherently violent. This used to be Earth and mankind is not there anymore. The apes took over. So that's why twists like that work. There were nuggets buried earlier on. It has relevance to the story. You can't just be like, and then suddenly you remove the mask and they were aliens the whole time. Mm -hmm. Like it has to have relevance to what the main theme and discussion was uh, going for the whole time in the movie or any other media. It could be even a video game. The, um, a lot of people, like, The Cake is a Lie became a joke, but that game was really good at being subtle with background stuff that told you more about what was going on. So it doesn't matter the medium, your twists have to be consistent with the theme and the story you were trying to tell. It won't have the emotional, what, mm -hmm. effect if it doesn't address what it is that makes people gasp. You have to build people up for the emotion. It's an emotional effect. Yeah, Sorry I, for my... No, you're fine. Hey, <laughs> we need, we need no, to go good. That was actually a really good. Critic podcast. I was going to say, um, one reviewer I follow called uh, M. Night Shyamalan fa uh, movies uh, loot boxes because you don't know what you're going to get. It's going to be seemingly random stuff of varying quality, but it's always completely weird and different from what you expect every single time you get one of them. Because, yeah, we went into the village expecting it to be as terrible as all the other, or the visit. Um, yeah. The village, I had a very funny movie experience with that when I went with my sisters to go see it, it was so poorly received. Everyone in the movie started actively yelling at the screen <laughs> about how terrible it was. We said, oh, I bet this is in modern times and just in a stupid secluded village. Oh, she's blind and that guy's like, that stupid police officer's not going to believe her or whatever. We predicted everything. People were just screaming at the screen. It was an awful experience, but it was funny. Um, <laughs> it was just a really piece of, it was a piece of crap. But like, uh, it, it, he does vary in quality. I liked the happening when I saw it. Uh, even after the stupid twist of his the plants making people kill themselves. Uh, I, it was still like an enjoyable film up until then. Um, Chris, what the hell, Shyamalan, what do you think? <laughs> We're half an hour into this goddamn podcast, you haven't said the last Darebender once Well, <laughs> I mean, I, I most certainly cannot follow up what Taro just said to talk about. Um, I will say, I don't have a whole lot of experience watching uh, Shyamalan films. Aside from The Last Airbender, which I think I, I, think I also might have seen in theaters, mm -hmm. the only uh, Shyamalan movie that I actively remember seeing was The Happening, and, I'm, and it was probably only a handful of years after it came out when it did that I saw it, and I remember, I remember enjoying it. I, re I remember it, like, enjoying the concept of like, uh, that it, humanity is terrible and nature is, is, is fighting back and humans are dying because they deserve it. Yeah, that was really, I turned yeah. out fine, I swear. <laughs> I turned out fine. Uh, so you, was, you saw like Sixth Sense, Unbreakable Oh, no, I, I, oh no, I'm sorry. I, I did see The Sixth Sense and uh, I think I, I saw it back, at, back uh, in the days when, you know, uh, we didn't have that knowledge and it was actually more of a proper twist and I remember like getting that wow experience. It was, it was pretty interesting. Um, I was I was also uh, so a bit of a side note. Um, uh, the the kid the, the kid uh, the actor who played the kid was uh, Haley Joel Osment, who was also the voice of Sora in all the Kingdom Hearts games, which is my favorite series. Of course. So <laughs> I just thought that was that was, that was an interesting. Yeah. Haley Joel Osment continues to be awesome to this day. Just uh, he's still doing a ton of acting and a ton of shows and stuff. He's oh he's yes. Great. Okay. Anyway, uh, not to get too sidetracked. Oh no, really? it's fine. <laughs> During this episode, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> well, no, 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 we are getting it? we are all incredibly sidetracked because we don't want to talk about this movie. Yeah, I was, I was gonna say, Me and Ed are both sitting here dreading having to describe the plot of this. <laughs> see viewers, see viewers, uh, we we cheated you. You thought this was actually going to be about the last hair, but no, we're going to talk about everything but it. <laughs> we're going to we're going to keep going into the philosophy of. Uh, modern day twists versus and and tropes and the, the evolution of filmmaking over time, um, <laughs> so, so. all leading up 
to M. Night Shyamalan's The Last Airbender. So, this is, uh, so are we just going to call this uh, the, the movie garbage adjacency podcast? <laughs> we'll buy another not a uh, mini. <laughs> no, no, no. We'll get to this dumbass yeah. movie. Yeah, but, so, uh, but yeah, anyway, so like, I don't necessarily have any strong opinions one way or the other about M. Night Shyamalan. Um, like what Tara was saying, I think he, he I think he tends to explore some interesting ideas and ask some interesting questions, but more often than not, the execution with answering them leaves a bit to be desired. Mm-hmm. I feel like he's probably a good writer, potentially. He's just a really yeah. bad director. Yeah, I do think he needs to get off of the camera. Probably. <laughs> yeah. I mean, honestly, some of the stuff he does is interesting, and like we'll go into when we eventually talk about this movie... <laughs> I know I'm sure that a lot of people find that firebenders can't create their own fire. Oh, we can't start yet. Uh, Kaylee, M. Night Shyamalan, go. (laughs) Uh, I will say that if you just take the base meaning behind every movie, you'll find that there is like a core uh, philosophy or idea. Core, like, yeah. Like, the whole thing about... Mm -hmm. With uh, the happening, it was nature versus man, mm-hmm. which is the basically the whole movie was just hey, plants are revolting because you know, not revolting but whatever. <laughs> um, suicide gassing. They're, 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 suicide they're, gassing. Right <laughs> they're suicide gassing humans because human humanity is horrible. We're cutting down trees. We're taking away habitats for animals. We've made plenty of plants extinct over thousands of years. So the main meaning behind the movie was great. It was just executed poorly. Um, I watched The Visit, which was... uh, I actually loved that movie. Mm. And I loved how pretentious some girl was. (laughs) She was great. I loved that. Um, And I did watch Lady in the Water, but I was like... A young teenager at, at the time. I'm and I do remember. It. It's, not uh, it's actually, it's not too bad. M. Night Shyamalan wrote himself in as a prophet. It's not <laughs> too bad, especially since the whole thing is based on a fable. Yeah. And the characters in the apartment are based off of those fables. So he ruined another piece of, of lore. Yes. Remember the guy basically. with like the one muscly arm and the, <laughs> my, the favorite, door? my favorite one was the child that could read cereal boxes. Yeah. <laughs> the movie's it's a, it's real bizarre. But, uh, but yeah, about to be bizarre for cutting you off, but um, a really weirdly specific thing. Speaking of the happening so much, we you making faces for? Anyway, <laughs> speaking of the happening, uh, that giant apartment complex it took place in, they actually built that entire gigantic building. Like an actual physical giant apartment building that the entire thing took place in because M. Night Shyamalan has a thing about all of his movies taking place in Philadelphia and there wasn't a complex like that in Philadelphia so they just built one. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's a real apartment building. I don't know if people are living in it now or if it was demolished or whatever, but yeah, it was like an actual oh building built God. just for that movie. But yeah, Kaylee, keep going. That would be, like, just... Oh, the same waste of resources. That would be horrible, though. Like, waste, we waste. built this beautiful building, and now we're going to not let anyone use it. Because fuck you. Because <laughs> capitalism. <laughs> mm. uh, Say that for the political uh, podcast, Ed. <laughs> this, surprise, this is my political podcast Say now. That every episode. <laughs> oh, you got us again, Ed. Oh, snap. Oh, fuck. Uh, we should probably start talking about this movie eventually. Yeah, we'll I'm gonna say, yeah, Kaylee, is that everything? Or anything else about the right. movies you preferred about it? Do well, well, you see any of the old ones from like the 90s or anything like that? I've never seen Sixth Sense, like, Throughout the whole movie, I've seen like bits and pieces of it, but I will... did. You see Stuart Little? <laughs> I have oh. seen Stuart Little. <laughs> oh hell! <laughs> Wait, did you see Stuart Little? Yes. He Wait, what? Him up. Holy he shit! Him up. Well, fuck this podcast. He did Stuart Little. That movie's awesome. <laughs> 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 yes, that makes this movie great. <laughs> Wait, did Hilly Kelman voice the mouse, or is that somebody else? No, that was Michael J. Fox. It I was thought. Michael J. Fox who did the mouse. Okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Was Hilly Kelman the kid? I feel like he was in that movie. I think no. maybe he <laughs> should yeah. just do, like, cutesy kids, kids movies. movies. Maybe yeah. that's his thing. Well, well this was supposed to be a movie for his kids. Yeah, you're right. Except yeah. he took it too seriously, like he always does. Yeah. Yeah. I don't that's know the what thing. the fuck he did. And that's it. the thing. He did it for his kids, not for... Hates. I bet his kids hated it. I would hope Probably. that if his kids enjoyed the show, they hated this movie because it it takes it doesn't 
Ah, I'm about to say, this movie is a bad, like I, I, I described it personally as a bad Wikipedia summary of a good show. Uh, we're about to do even worse by making an even more summarized version of this shitty summary of a good show. <laughs> I mean, that's all this movie is, is it's summary. We're condensing the movie into, yeah. <laughs> we're condensing the show into the movie, into the Wikipedia. Yeah, but watch yeah. this, but watch this. We've been taking so long about talking the move, about this movie, it's going to be as long as the movie. It probably will be. <laughs> uh. We, yeah, that's, yeah, it's least, a better use of your time. But at least this hour and 44 minute podcast is better than actually watching the movie. Absolutely. Oh, oh yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> I took, I thought I was going to take. I will tell you, seriously, I have retained nothing. I know. I was watching yeah. it. When we paused at a half an hour, which is how long this podcast is so far, I literally <laughs> didn't know what the hell happened for that entire last 30 minutes of my life. Right. Yeah. I was watch. I was staring at this movie, reading the subs. I was talking about it with my friends, and I don't know what the fuck happened. <laughs> yeah, I took I took notes. I did take some notes, and I'm gonna read them right now. Um, I did write down Chris's comment about the bootleg version, and I wrote these are my notes for the last Airbender. I hate this. I hate this. I blame Chris right now. I hate this. That is all I wrote down. And I said, yep. I'm done with my notes. <laughs> all right, so why do we? After last Airbender, Chinese boot like yeah. Okay. That's yeah. literally all my notes. I was gonna say, why don't we start <laughs> with the characters' this. names? No, Chris, <laughs> don't force us to do this. I made you do this. Yes, yeah. did this. And I'm going to read the quote from Chris in our Discord of course. chat. Uh, and, and this is this is apparently what started this whole yes. in the first place. We are doing this, as it pointed out, because I want to give Chris shit. So I subjected my friends and wife to The Last Airbender because Chris said when we were talking about the, Air, the Last Airbender Netflix show, he said, I suspect it'll go the route of the live action film. Fairly decent on its own merit. Now he did follow up and say... Absolute dog shit when compared to the source material. So that part was correct. But he used the word fairly decent on its own merit. Yep. The only thing that's fairly <sighs> decent about it is that some of the costumes are actually pretty nice. Yeah, I like Ozai's yeah. costume. It looked really cool. Oh yeah, <laughs> you just get to see Ozai. You just get to see Ozai in this. And oh yeah, and I pointed out this when I saw it. I swear to God, that actor looks like when you take a picture of somebody and you shrink their face in, and they got a little tiny face on their big head. Oh, That's what that actor looked like to me. Yeah, I was about to say, are you ready to uh, start this fucking thing? Because I don't. But no, but yeah. here we, we go. Are gonna, we are gonna rush because I really don't want to think about this stupid asshole movie. <laughs> I mean, the the. the, the so, like, Resident mm -hmm. Evil Apocalypse, Resident Evil 2 Apocalypse, was basically an action film with video game references. <clears throat> this is basically a summary of The Last Airbender TV show. Season 1 specifically. Season 1 specifically. Like, the bullet points with extra references to other things that they didn't show. I mean, it's literally, it's nothing happens so many times and then they condense everything down in the worst way possible yeah so they cut out a ton they cut out literally everything involving any characters yeah Sokka including the bending yeah they, I know they, they, there's Let's no say. almost no bending in this movie Everyone's characters are pretty much assassinated I uh, um what is they call him this one <sighs> was a very weird sad dopey kid uh, he was if he wasn't completely like emotionally neutral with a smile on his face, he was actively sad. And I was like, this is not Aang at all. This is terrible. I mean, in the ending, he you know all these people are bowing down to him, and he just has this he does this little like you thank you pose, and he holds it, and his face looks like oh miserable. god <laughs> miserable. He looked and miserable. His lower lip trembled the whole time, and it was also a very strangely long hold that should have been cut. One thing I learned in animation school is you do not hold that long. A couple of seconds at most is yeah. long enough to catch people's attention. It looked like the kid was in pain just doing well, we that. Up, yeah. We can't yeah. the last shot yet. But, <laughs> but I mean, <laughs> I was, was going to say, but yeah, it's, it's as a whole, it, it, like, no, uh, the, the point of that was um, Ong Eng's character was very weirdly not as happy or chipper or energetic at all as Eng in the show. Which I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Chris. That I'm comparing it to the show should be basing on its own merit. Yes, but <laughs> own merit. I will, I will say, uh, Katara's actress, uh, Nicola Peltz, who I think I, I knew her from something before this movie. Like I said, everyone's acting is very wooden. Uh, Katara is not, like, hope-speechy, you know, happy or fun either. Sokka 
has no lines. He's very mumbly. He has no personality. Yeah, yeah. literally no personality nothing. whatsoever. He's nothing. He. Uh, I you call him a buzzkill in this. Yeah. 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 I, so I've been watching my uh, my wife has been making me watch. Well, not make me. I I volunteer to do as well. Um, <laughs> she has been watching Twilight, and I said sure because I like watching bad films. You know, we have a whole podcast about oh, it called Movie Garbage. Come back to us, Twilight, please. <laughs> Twilight but, Garbage. but no, no, no. But, but 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 like. I'm watching that when I was watching that film, and I'm like, and I saw Jasper, and I knew that that was the same actor. I'm like, he, I was like, he's acting so terribly. My wife pointed out that that's how he is in the books. He's very like emotionless and all that. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, so he's just. I watched this movie, and I'm like, oh, he's playing Jasper still, emotionless and cold, and like no personality. Yeah. With the intense stares that kind of make you feel uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah. he does nothing, and he's Super no one next. Which is really so sad because Sokka was my favorite from the original. Same. But we didn't get we, Kara and Kayla, We didn't even get your damn favorite characters from Avatar. <laughs> <laughs> quick, quick! We have four, forty minutes in, and we haven't started this piece of shit. So, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> who's your favorite character? I just said so, Yeah, Sokka. Sokka. Now, as far as Zuko. Avatars, nice, uh, nice. It, it makes sense. As far as Avatars, <laughs> between the two show ones, I mean, I liked them both. Um, I'd probably, mm, I don't know who I would relate to more, but it would probably, I don't I know. I mean, Ed's not completely wrong because she's closer to my age, whereas Aang, I'd watch him like zipping around on his yeah, little ball little of air and I'd be like, can I have one third of your energy? <laughs> Uh, Cora, well, I'm about to, they can't get on it again. I, I'm just about to start gushing about a great chorus. But she is a brash, uh, aggressive person who's like very tough and whatever. Compared to Anne, who in the show, accordingly, is supposed to be energetic and happy, go lucky, uh, occasionally sad about his responsibility. But I mean, it's it's he's not using this, this depressed as this weirdo. Kid he's using his naivety <laughs> as a mask for the burdens being placed upon him. Yeah. I mean, and you he can, is technically and mentally twelve. Yeah, yeah. he gets thrust into this. He technically gets thrust into the knowledge that all of his friends and technical family were murdered. Yeah, yeah. and he's a hundred years in the future, and he's alone. Yeah, he has no yeah. one. Yeah, boy, he did not get any real like character friendship development in this in this movie with Korra, with Korra. Katara, <laughs> and uh, Sokka. I'm sorry, oh, Soka. I'm sorry, Soka. 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 Yes, his name is um, Soka. The the pronunciations of these. They didn't have any like actual friendship character moments whatsoever in this movie. I'm just mm-hmm. thinking about that now. I think we're probably just gonna fucking do just go <laughs> general. Even between brother them. and sister. Yeah, and, they like, didn't. Have they anything. had an established they... relationship. Boom! First thing in the TV show, like you saw, they were acting like antagonistic siblings. First thing in this. You got like nothing aside from her at the very beginning trying to make that water bubble, and then it splashes all over him, and he he doesn't even act that mad. He doesn't blow up the way he does in the show, and that's mm-hmm. it was the, the, the other start time she literally end. caught him into like a whole ice cube, and he just stood there. Like, yeah, he yeah, he just wasn't being like, like, Tara. Tara. Yeah, Tara. yeah, he's an entirely blank face expression on his face the entire movie, like barely acting. <laughs> Absolutely not Sokka. So- uh, so- yeah. uh, the Soka was not anything like Sokka. I mean, in the, again, I know we're taking this on its own merit, Chris. <laughs> okay. But in the show, especially in the first season, his character was inept, but in a comical way. And he and tried. It, and he tried. He always would try. He didn't just give up. He didn't just stand around. And he always took action. And this in this film... Also, lots of funny sarcasm. He yes, sarcastic yes, character. of course. Yes, and he had his own brand of humor. He had a lot. Sokka had a billion things going on. But in this movie, I mean, the entire time, <laughs> Soka... Uh, uh, I want to throw up saying that. Um, he didn't do anything. I mean, he stood around and watched other people do things. Yeah. And just was <gasps> there. I just realized... We didn't see Iroh drink a single cup no, of tea. We didn't. We didn't. Oh, we didn't. Yeah. Oh, what? There was, we'll, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. I don't even. Are we gonna? I'm just talking about our feeling. Like, whatever. We'll yeah, get to that about, ice, the, I know what scene we, that he did. Oh he yeah, actually yeah. Did one. There was one scene where he thought where he talked about where he drank tea in like a, <laughs> the side corner panel of the TV while. Um, Zuko was like fighting those guys, fist fighting. Yeah, those guys. exactly. Uh, yeah. Wow. It was very uh, okay. He was drinking yeah. something we assumed but he was, was drinking. Tea. <laughs> I didn't even remember that. I didn't even notice. That. It was really. He was literally in the corner of the. I tree. was just shocked <laughs> by all this awesome firebending happening yeah, in that yeah. firebending training. <laughs> I'm about to say, are we are we doing this, Ed? You're the host. Are we are we just a general feelings this whole thing? Because I'm fine with it. I mean, <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so <laughs> so. It, I think, well, we're real quick, let's kind of go over, like, we'll go by each scene. So here's, I mean... Well, the th- first shot... I mean, the first shot is terrible. No, they- no, no, the first shot is actually okay because it's 
uh, oh, four people mimicking dude. during the uh, bending. And notice how quickly they're moving, too, and bending initially after it. Oh, well, yeah. Fire bender the doesn't old... seem to be pulling fire from anything. just making fire themselves. Well, somewhere. it was kind of on the ground. Yeah, it was so totally it was that. It, it, off screen. It pulled it Yeah, but the, the, it's, it's mimicking the opening. No voiceover. Yeah. Cut to a scroll of okay. Tatara talking about backstory, but not even going into the full backstory. Yeah. And People the, bend the elements, and once somebody can do them all, and he's called the Avatar. But he just disappeared. <laughs> and spirit, they're tied to the spirit world. That's all we get in that. What? Plot. No. Yeah. But <laughs> in the, in the, if you remember the first episode, she does say the Avatar disappeared. You know, but I believe that he's still out there and will save us someday. And there was and a bit of that pan, that like crane shot that goes up into yeah. the sky. Yeah, but like for Katara was hopeful. You know, she was Which naive was as her well. Thing. And yeah. this whole and the, the whole first season was about naivety and innocence because <laughs> it's Aang, it's a mirror of Aang. You know, his innocence, you know, masked the weight of what she saw, and you'd see that in that first season. And this movie just took none of it, but kept yeah. all the little. Bullet points around some of the bullet points. Some of the bullet points. Nothing and it, to do with character or relationship. I mean, there are references to things where there's com- combinations of stuff. Like in the in the whole Earth Prison scene, that's a reference to Haku in that whole episode. Haru. No oh, fuck. Who cares? Um, <laughs> I was already jumping. Up with, uh, yeah, the and then there's the they have they get a waterbending scroll like they get in the pirate episode, and you see Kyoshi, the the <laughs> um, like from the episode where you meet Suki, who's not in this movie. Kyoshi Island episode. Yeah, the Kyoshi. I mean, they literally put Kyoshi Island, uh, Haru, and the waterbending scroll acquisition all into one, se- mm. literally one sequence. I mean, it's one sequence. There's, there's. I mean, it's hard to fucking explain this movie because nothing happens the entire time. Well, we described it yeah, well, a lot. Of time, technically, technically, yeah. a lot has happened. It's just not memorable. Yeah. I mean, no, I don't think it happens. I mean, they literally <laughs> walk around scenery, not reacting to things. Yeah, they're in very similar looking forests for the entirety. And of then it. they say, "Oh, we've been here for weeks." In a throwaway line. Yeah. It removes the character's agency, and it also removes our reason to care about the characters. And the One of the reasons reason. you're supposed to care about the characters is they have influence on the things around them, and you see those emotional moments, so you get attached to them, too, and you feel like you know them. I feel like... We didn't know these people. Yeah. Technically, I think M. Night, M. Night Shyamalan was hoping that the people who have watched the entire Avatar series would still have the same emotional connection mm-hmm. that the characters in the animated series had, <laughs> and they would project them onto the characters on the screen. Instead, it just made a mockery of the animated series, and it made a mockery of the characters, since they were nothing like that. They were like the, almost like the knockoff versions of the play characters. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah we're saying that it's a Chinese bootleg of the... By the, uh, of the, the, the Ember Island players? <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, pretty pretty much. Much. Oh my goodness. But at pretty least much. they had energy. At least that was funny. They were <laughs> they were overacting, but they, you know My scar's not on the wrong side. <laughs> <laughs> like they were over they were playing characterizations to the point where like they were the exact opposite of this film. Because they were so far exaggerated. Well, this was so far under exaggerated. That exactly. Yeah. It's they basically just made a mockery of all of the Avatar series, not a good mock. Yeah, they made. A they didn't make a slate. parody. They yeah. made yeah. a. Let me just cough on this and see what happens. I mean, you just explained the whole thing, so I think we can just wrap up now, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that <laughs> was a very really good sucks. description. I mean, that's also yeah. I was to say, well, since we're all over the, oh, well, Ben's been yeah. like trying to wait for well, something yeah, to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say, speaking of like the whole time lapse thing that Tara was talking about, Fire Nation apparently can travel like. Very oh, yeah. quickly. Yeah. yeah. Like we went from Northern uh, Earth Kingdom to Southern Fire Kingdom yeah. in four days. Yeah, they're yeah. yeah. All over but then like, it takes them weeks to get to the North Pole. Yeah, they were doing anything for weeks. Like, what the hell is that about? And then how long and we were they? Didn't see any of it, so we didn't feel like it had taken them a long time to get there. No. Yeah. Which is an important part in filmmaking. And in the Northern, in, in the whole Northern Siege, Zuko is questioned, and Katara interact in that fight scene in the spirit uh, t- little t- place. Uh, the holy whatever this fuck is called. I can't think right now. This <laughs> we're, we're already talking about all of the books. Like I said, yeah. Yeah, it's fine. yeah, at this point, we're not doing a summary. We're just going to talk about... <laughs> if you, hey, if you want a summary, uh, please watch the television show Avatar The Last Airbender. <laughs> Currently on Netflix or, actually, at this moment. No, if you want a really good summary... Just watch the one episode of the Ember Island Players. Honestly, yes. Actually, that that is, is a, that's oh. a real suggestion. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, 
But, like, so Zuko is supposed to be the chasing the Avatar, right? Literally, Katara's like, who are you? He's been chasing for so long. Yeah. Zuko and Katara barely know each other. So when it, later on, Aang, it, he uses the line, we could have been friends or whatever, which is in the blue spirit, which he doesn't say it then. He, he says that away. after <sighs> if, for saving this random person who kidnapped him. You don't know who he is. The fuck? Yeah, it's... And well, technically, they do know who Zuko... Z- Zuko. Zuko. <laughs> Zuko hey, is Zuko. in... Uh, in the animated series. They, they met, know who he is. They've had several encounters with him. All the group knows him by that. Yeah, they yeah. should know who by he the, is. Yeah, by the... Uh, by the uh, and they even had fun, Northern like, Siege. thwarting him. Like, they were, like, borderline frenemies even before they yeah. actually broke him down into wanting to be friends with them. Now, what what would you expect from a movie that has Zuko and Iro, because yeah, yeah. not, not Iro, Iro, have other people do exposition for their characters. Oh my god. Yeah, the amount of times we had to like like stop ourselves from pausing the movie to be exasperated whenever a character would just take Zuko or Iro and just like tell them their own backstory. It happens child. about Yeah. It happens about three or four times not exaggerating. Child, you're a smart boy. Tell me, what do you know about the Zuko, the prince of the Fire Nation. Oh, he did something bad? Yeah, he was an Agni Kai, right? Yeah, he was in an Agni Kai. <laughs> no, Agni Kai. Agni Kai. Agni Kai. Agni Kai. Oh, Agni I'm Kai. sorry, an Agni Kai. Because uh, he's his father because he disrespected a general. <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey, hey. No, it was to protect some of his own friends. Protect his own friends. He protects some of his friends. My child voice is probably better than that child's acting. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> hey, 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 don't be mean to the child. He didn't know what he was doing. Yeah, but I was going to say, uh, Ben pointed out a good thing. Yeah, the one thing about that stupid <laughs> flashback bad exposition was we got to see Azula for a second. Uh, literally. <laughs> she didn't even get to say anything. She was just there smiling. smiling and, crazily. and that was it. And I was like, yeah. I mean, it goes was, along with the her animated Yeah, she, she was. She is in the one thing that they got yeah. right, and we only saw Twice. Yeah, she is in in that scene in the flashback. He she, yeah, she, yeah, she smiled. Oh, in the original. In yeah, the, yeah. I think that was like way before we knew her character. I remember mm-hmm. watching the, on TV. I was like, who's that girl? Why is she looking all happy that Zuko's getting beaten up? But like, yeah, of course. Literally, I know that my favorite character. And I'd be crying at the end of the series when she gets defeated. Uh, but <laughs> <laughs> no, we it's, had it coming. How dare you? We're gonna get this right again. We did. We went through all this on the damn. Let's uh, go. Let's do this. Course. How dare you? All right, uh, stop it. I'm the host. I'm gonna go get host this. powers activate. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, no, um, that's, uh, this movie sucks. What the fuck else happened? Uh, uh, I mean, the other thing too is, so, like... UA's head was shaped like a penis. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> there are some moments in this film that did make me genuinely wait, crack up wait, laughing. Wait, You didn't notice? <laughs> you didn't oh, notice? just no. Five men marching to throw a pebble. Oh, oh yes. Yeah. Yes. 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 You have probably seen the GIFs online, and yes, I say GIF, not GIF, because it's not peanut butter. Nah, how dare you? It is GIF. Thank you. Someone <laughs> gets According it. According to the person who made yeah, it, but so, graphics is a hard G. Well, too bad. <laughs> okay. I, I, We're getting yeah. off topic I'll, here. Yeah, I'll say all day talking about GIF and GIF. I, that's a, <laughs> GIF and GIF. <laughs> GIF and GIF. GIF and GIF. GIF and GIF. It's a TIF file. Uh, no. What the fuck are we talking Oh, yeah, the fucking horrible Earth Betty scene. So, the only Earth Betty representation, me and Ben's fucking favorite, right? is, those, is the, the, that stupid, like, now, of course, you know, like, people say that scene, it's very badly shot, but what they're doing is putting up that stupid wall, and there's some asshole closer to the camera <laughs> moving that small, tiny rock very slowly across the screen. This is a head to so yeah. who didn't plan that right? Yeah, you hire it looks storyboarders, which is what I trained in. You hire storyboarders to lay these things out ahead of time. Now, in live action films, which is a fancy term for using real people instead of being fully animated, live action films, um, you know, they kind of take those as rough suggestions a lot of the time. They don't follow it bit by bit. But in a lot of films, particularly since you talked about the Marvel Cinematic Universe earlier, they do follow it a bit more closely because it does take more pre-planning when you use heavy CGI. So if they paid somebody to plan some of that stuff out, why didn't they follow it? Or why didn't they have somebody review it in a way that went like, hey, it looks like it took six people to move a boulder the size of a basketball. That looks incorrect. Six yeah. people should make a giant wall of stone, not a basketball. Size. That's if it was basketball size. It was that. very stupid. It, was, it wasn't even like 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 thrust forward, like it was much. It was just it floated. It just floated slowly. It looked like, it looked like an astronaut released it while he was in the space station. Yes. <laughs> and the other the other bad thing is that 
Yue's whole sacrifice meant nothing. Yeah, she had no characterization. And then the yeah. only other good thing from that sequence of the moon returning back to normal oh, is that uh, what? No, other, uh, my favorite part. My favorite part. So I literally died yeah, laughing. Ed lost his shit on the couch next to me. <laughs> yeah. So the moon comes back as Yue sacrificed herself. Who the fuck cares? Because we have no connection to this character. Hey, how dare you? I'll have you know that that's... Uh, I, I, hey. I, I don't know how to pronounce her name. I think it's so, Gabriella uh, Seychelles. So, Seychelles. So, can we all agree uh, that... Voice extra stuff for Sami from Korra, which we all love. Oh, yes, she she's awesome. well yeah. as a Sami. Oh, yeah. She's yeah. I'm, talking about, I'm talking about UA, the character oh, yeah, in this yeah, yeah, movie. Yeah, yeah. Can we just agree that UA in this movie was effectively nothing more than just a... a penis a, head? Well, <laughs> <laughs> she was quite literally a dickhead. Yeah, no. there's a shot of her where you see her behind her and the hair is a penis. She and was, somebody did, looked at that and said, that's yep, fine. that's fine. So, <laughs> but no, but like, can we just agree that UA's entire point of this film was just to be a Tupperware container for spirit energy? Yeah, yeah. literally. The spirit yeah. died, so look, I need that life back. Hey, girl, come here, come here, die. Like, give me that life back. <laughs> immediately, <laughs> immediately. Mm-hmm. So, the moon comes back. Because she kills, she she basically. I was like, you should kill yourself, and she says, okay. <laughs> and Moon comes back. Everyone's staring up at the sky, and all of a sudden, Across the battlefield. Everyone's silent. So Look now the, the Water Tribe is feeling empowered again. <laughs> and the first thing we see of the Water Tribe fighting back is a just dude comes out of the frame and tackles a guy <laughs> like football tackle, <laughs> like just straight up like just full on. Yeah. I mean, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. So, if you remember, in our Resident Evil 2 Apocalypse episode, I mentioned how near the end, there was a scene where um, Mila Jovovich runs through, like near the end, she encounters these three guys, and it was just, it was just waiting for a moment for the, uh, for Nemesis to run in and to hit, hit the three of them. Yeah. That's what this scene was. It yeah. was just as comical. <laughs> yeah, it was insanely stupid. Another great moment of course it was, was yeah. so the Fire Nation is, you know, daunting with this na- massive naval armada. Paku, who has not been named except for in the subtitles, yeah. is on the wall, stone wall, by the way, in this, <laughs> in this, instead of, you know, building a, a snow ice wall, they built a stone wall. He stands with his army and goes... <laughs> and then every soldier, every soldier, as this one woo is going on, yeah. is just like slamming their yeah, spears just dum, dum, in dum, dum, random. Dum, dum. They're like not even in sequence. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, somebody again. If he wanted to be inspired by uh, like a tri- like. Um, I know Pacific Islanders specifically do it. Like, um, you see Maui do it in Moana. The, oh. I think they're called Haka. Yeah, Haka. Like, the, they do that, that in kind of a... They can be legitimately intimidated. In fact, if, if was it the eighth it, one, I believe? Uh, I believe so, yeah. Well, he had his uh, the soccer team. The, the Rock had his yeah. soccer, the girls yeah. soccer team. Yeah, I mean, he Hawkins literally... The, the, the yeah, the Rock literally has his whole soccer team do that. Yes. It and was, it was amazing. It's yeah. really cool when it's done well, but that was a... Very. If you wanted to do something that had that so- kind of a vibe to it, you should have brought on somebody who comes from that culture, who does it, and consulted with them because <laughs> they would be able to get that energy across, even in film, though to a slightly lesser extent than seeing it in person. Because I think like maybe they were trying to go for something like that. I don't know if uh, mm. Inuit or Cree or any of the uh, northern associated <laughs> tribes... Well, yeah. well, two. I'm about to, to say now we're of this, getting into this minefield now. <laughs> we are going to talk. So we somehow, for the past uh, almost hour now, somehow avoided. Dude, we, we, we in the we casting. In now. Yeah, no, that's uh, the this, casting. The number one. Yeah, the number one minefield. Of this I year. think the number one thing M Night Shyamalan should have done, or at least the whole message from this is, maybe I should have actually talked to the to the nationality of the people we're based off of. You know what? I'm, I'm going to say this. If he had cast all of one nationality for it, even if it wasn't for the original show, I feel like it would have been better. Because it, the because there is a bit of interpretation, you know, I understand that they had the source material, but if you're going to try to make things your own, like, the one thing I will say about this film that I thought was good is, firebenders have to bend actual fire. They can't create it. So it's a big scene later on when Iroh is able to use his inner fire and make it out of nothing. I thought that was a not bad 
idea. Yeah, that was an. Well, I'm about to say that it was interesting. Of, it feels like it came out of the bending in this movie being so like <clears throat> lethargic and slow in comparison. Because like a firebender on their own, yeah, they could be dangerous. But like as the series, both uh, Avatar and Korra go on, it's like any element can be incredibly deadly at any point in any kind of way. But the yeah. fire, the reason the fire was dangerous, I guess, in the show is that they could make it themselves and they could use that to make more, be more industrial. And yeah. Like, yeah. But like. That, yeah, it was an interesting concept in this movie. I will say, I, I people had a problem with that. I never had a problem with yeah, it myself. Back, I, even back in 2010, I was like, sure, yeah, the, all, all the other ones technically needed around them to do and it. it. That makes good, sense. That's fine. And it did actually a good job because it then helped Iroh become that yeah, that character was a, we wanted. Like, honestly, that was the yeah, only moment where that, hero was Iroh. Yeah, that scene I, I, in the theater, I remember <clears> being like, oh, oh shit, yeah. Even like knowing everything, like that's how it should be. I felt like that was a cool ass scene. That was an interesting thing. He actually made it himself out fine, like something cool. Yeah, but um, um but, yeah, I yeah. wish he did lightning bend like he did. He did. He lightning bended in the first season. That would have been nice yeah. to see. <laughs> but but, <laughs> but uh, yeah, like so the casting. Like I said, you know, they wanted to make all of the Fire Nation more Indian. I believe, right? Well, the, uh, I, I'm pretty sure they were up varying, like, probably some Pakistani and Iranian people. Yeah, like, more Middle East. Of Middle looked, Eastern, they yeah, looked in a South way Asian, Middle Eastern people. Yeah. It was very, it's actually considered um, Southwestern Asia. Because yeah. uh, yeah. technically India is part of Asia. Parts of, a lot, the larger part of Russia is considered part of Asia. Yeah. Pretty much if it's, yeah. If it's not Middle Eastern and it's not European and it's on that general landmass, it's going to be Asia. Yeah. So, um, the majority of the Avatar universe is based off of South. Eastern Asia, so China, they're, Japan, Korea, yeah. Thailand, Tibet, all that. Um, yeah, they're definitely. But yeah. I, I said I, th- I felt like this. And you could have, you know, and justified it because me, you know, they're yeah. all darker skinned. They could have. They did a lot to could, could have justified it. Making all of the Fire Nation South Asian, but besides them being the villains and Papad presumably being um, Emma Shaman's actual nationality, interesting concept. Why is every other race weirdly? Inexplicably mixed. mixed, but not the Fire Hard Nation. Mixed. Like, yeah, we see, uh, yeah, as you said, Korean Inuit people along in the South Southern Water Tribe. Next to next to Katara, uh, Katara and Soka, who are very explicitly white. I mean, you literally had a dude who played and a vampire. Their, yeah, and then you see there, but then also in the Northern Water Tribe, you see it was like mostly white too, which is weird. But yeah, that trying to say something like that would be that would be an interesting maybe. If it's like, yeah, their family's from the north and they came out like, like, uh, Yeah, but they should have addressed it. That could have been, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah what about grandma? Address. Their grandma was, oh, grandma was. She is northern, there. actually, you're right. Yeah. Yeah. That could have so, been, but that could have been interesting, but it was not explicit in the, in the movie in any way. They didn't talk about it at all or address it. Yeah, we yeah. see, the, uh, we see a bunch of darker skinned Asian, uh, actors for the Earthbenders during the camp scene. Uh, but right after that, when they go to a bunch of different places, we see, like, I told you, like, you guys probably all miss it because we're all, like, laughing about the movie, but, like, one scene where they were getting back on Appa, leaving a place where there was a lot of black people in, like, orange and red robes. Yes, I saw Yes, that. I remember yeah, that. It was a flash scene, but, like, I don't know who those people were. I assume that they're just random Earth Kingdom people. They, but, were, like, they were in the same village, though. They yeah, reused they, that set so They reused that set, obviously. Lot, but, like, everywhere else seemed kind of vaguely mixed or, yeah, like, the, well, yeah, Northern, what, be Northern Washington. It was like, like their, it was they like were their more, version of trying to say, oh, look, Yeah, it is the first, yeah, which I'm sure was, uh, was uh, uh, what, what is it called? Like, the, the post, um, the post recording, like, uh, extra scenes added to be like, no, it's, it is the first, uh, Ignore the fact that Ahsoka so- so- and uh, yeah. Katara are white. <laughs> like, yeah, and then very, very I choice. mean, then you see the flashback of Aang's childhood, and every kid there looks completely different as well. <gasps> yeah, there are some which like, makes... Southeast Asian looking people, along with Gatsu, who we're pretty sure maybe is some Either... sort of dark skinned Asian. Race yeah, he's sure. black or Pacific. He could have been. I thought. I think he might have been uh, some sort of yeah, like like a uh, like Malaysian, said, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Malaysian. Malaysian or Afro Polynesian or something like that. Yeah, uh, maybe. Yeah, he was very dark skinned. He, he was, yeah. dark, he was yeah. very Next dark to skin. pale little Aang. Yeah, and but uh, that uh, that actor I'm pretty sure is um, of some sort of Asian descent. I couldn't really tell. But I'm not gonna, we're not going to get this. We're already in this now. But um, <laughs> it was the, the, yeah, the race casting was a very bizarre choice. I, I, I know neither of us, of course, looked it up. But there are lots and lots of interviews with um, M. Night justifying <clears throat> it or explaining it in various ways. We didn't bother looking it up, so we're not going to talk about it. We're just going to make yeah. fun of it. Uh, <laughs> You know what you didn't bring up at all? Huh? Opposite of people. Oh, <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> well, we're uh, talking... Uh, Paul, uh, on, are we, done with, our, are we done with the very serious whitewashing conversation? No, well, not ba- barely, but still. <laughs> is, it, hey, is it ever done? <laughs> it was very so, weird. I mean, the, before we go to the centipede legs here, um, yeah, it's just it was just poorly done because there was no consistency or cohesion to it. You know, a lot aside of times... Aside from the Fire Nation. <laughs> aside from the Fire Nation. I mean... So, I, think the, I think just the overall thing is that... <clears throat> Oh, the shit. only <laughs> oh boy, Knock my the only up. the only inherent dark skinned people were the Fire Nation. 
the rest and they were, were the evil people. <clears throat> yeah, it plays into the colorism. Rest, the rest of the people were, yes, they there were some darker skinned people and the, on the good side, and the only other dark, dark skinned person we see was an air bending monk. Who's dead? Who's dead? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah none of the difference. main characters so in any way were people of color, really. So really what it looks like is that all the evil people <clears throat> are dark skinned. Yep. Or dead. Or dead. <laughs> I, I mean, my my one thought on that is, uh, and I'm going to give the benefit of the doubt, is because, because M. Night Shyamalan had such a big hand in this, yes. I think that was more so he liked the Fire Nation or he wanted to be in it, so that was who he put yes. into it. I don't think he intended yeah, to play into colorism, but in but there a wider is... trend, it does unfortunately contribute to the wider trend of colorism. Yeah, yeah. I remember very explicitly in 2010, <clears throat> leading up to this movie, there were dozens and dozens and dozens of articles being like, what the fuck are you doing? Why are all these explicitly Asian-named characters from the original series being cast as white actors? Or why are all the, uh, the Fire Nation, which is pretty explicitly Japanese in a lot of their, like, like subtext, customs, yeah, yeah, yeah. is also all uh, you know South Asian. And I think Asian. it was extrapolated from like that like, one oh, time they the infiltrate hell? the Fire Nation, <laughs> and like they have a couple of outfits and a couple of background characters who look more Indian, and like he's it, like there was like that one like in the beach episode kind of was juxtaposed with that too. They had some outfits that were not. It, very Japanesey. They were kind of more Indian as. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of the, the, all the, like, the fire, the, the actual fire, the like fire energy symbol looks kind of like a Southeast Asian too. Like the yes. original. Like I mean, the, but there's like, a lot like, of like um, Azula's hairpin and stuff like that. And then also there's that really cool ass episode with the um, Aztec inspired fire Oh yeah. Dragons. That was fantastic. Yes. Um, yeah. But then even then, Ooh, I should do a Avatar. Both... I wish I watched that instead of this fucking movie. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I thought we were doing today. Well, <laughs> you got me tricked you. Yeah, that's how we got I you here. <laughs> hey, you getting free food after again. this. Yeah, Chris, you're lying down. Me. Yes, I am. What He's do you think dead. about the movie? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so like, is this what this now is? Now judge it on your own merit. <laughs> 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 on its own merit. It's yeah, sorry, we apologize yeah. for talking about the show so much, Chris. We know you hate that. Yeah. <laughs> and, you, we, and we know you love this movie. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so like, is, is that what this has been leading up to? Is like the, the, the big question, like, did Chris change his opinion? <laughs> well, I mean, we can get to that. We're not, we're not there yet. That's, that'll probably be like the last question yes. before we stop recording. But no, I mean, I just the, want to see what, what, any uh, general opinions on this fucking On the movie. casting. Well, we're still on the casting. I guess, yeah. We're all over the fucking No, I, I mean, I, I basically echo what's been said here. Like, the, the fact that, yeah. that Katara and Sokka and Ong were all white... And, like I said, I think, and like the majority uh, of the rest of the Ong might be a little spicy something else. I'm not sure, but <laughs> well, maybe. Yeah, it's, I mean, uh, I was saying, go ahead. But like, and, and compared to like the vast majority of the cast that was explicitly not white, it just it feels out of place. I don't know. It was a very bizarre choice. Yeah. So, <laughs> so as a host, I'm gonna end this topic here with my final thought on it. Like I said, it was. I feel like it was unintentional, but I feel like the biggest issue was the lack of cohesion. And like the placement of it, because it could have it could have worked, you know, if you're gonna take it to be your own, make it your own. But you know, it's it's why aesthetic is more important than graphics. If things all, no matter how good something looks, if it doesn't fit together, it's going to look out of place. And that's what this movie did. There was no cohesion, and it you also lack a placement of time, of location, of all of that stuff. So unintentionally, there are a lot of social issues that this casting created. Um, and again, also by not doing that, you did forsake actors of color who probably could have made a better film. Yeah. You know, potentially. Also, yeah, of course, that continued on to this day until only recently when the uh, TV show cast was announced. Yes. Still a legend, I believe. But Still a legend so, at this moment. But yeah, I feel like... It, it was unintentional, but there are still some systematic issues into it, and it was there are just so many issues with it, you know. And if you're going to... I mean, you can say this, though. Because he cast white people in it, at least it was their careers that were ruined and not actual good actors of color <laughs> who now have the stink of this on their resume. I was like, Dev Patel went on to do a lot, and so did um, Iros, or um, Zhao's actor. I know him from a ton of stuff. He's a, yeah. he's a great comedian, actually. He was on The Daily Show for a really long time. That's right, yeah. He's really, really funny. I wish I remembered his name, but like, yeah, he was directed shittily. Dev Patel, yeah. a great actor, also directed shittily as a bad guy in the fucking movie. <laughs> yeah. So, I, I want to talk about the centipedes like, real quick. It's just more of a <laughs> reference. So... I do not like the way that Appa looks in this movie. I think he looks creepy and terrifying. Yeah. 
one of the first big full shots of him is he's they're in the the water tribe village. Oh, yeah, well, air before, when, he, when he's when he's uh, you said the first time he said it was when he was buried in the ice. He said, "I fucking hate Appa. He's those creepy centipede legs." That's right. Yes. When he was still buried in the ice. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, so then he's, he's he's floating just unexpectedly, and I was like, "See, look at those creepy legs." And my wife goes. Those are children. <laughs> He's got children hanging off of all three of his legs, but to me, they always look like weird little, like, extra centipede fingers. Oh, God. It was just a bunch of children trying to hold him down. Yeah. It was beautiful. It was, it was remarkable. Well, to be fair. Well, either hold him down or just, like, going for yeah, a ride. Yeah, just playing, yeah, playing yeah. around on him. He looked terrible, though, right? We can all agree on this. Yeah. Well, well, I, oh, well, I don't know. I, I, he I, barely I, had any scenes. The fur looked mm-hmm. decent. Sorry for cutting you off, Chris. <laughs> I just wanted to say, I thought he looked okay whatever the fur looked nice but then the king he saw his fucking face and it's basically a horrible <laughs> ugly face. nightmare thing it looked <laughs> awful it looked uh, like it looked like they tried to CGI a pug's face yeah <laughs> really really <laughs> fucked up and weird it kind of reminded me I know it's gonna sound really weird but it kind of reminded me of the moon face the moon no, face oh the yeah the moon from uh, Majora's Mask <laughs> oh no wait with the, the uh, Majora's Mask uh, moon no no no, no the that's not what came to oh face. the emoji yeah 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 uh, <laughs> just the the really creepy <laughs> energy. He was creepy as oh, shit. Chris, where were you supposed to park a job? But yeah, I was going to say that, uh, like, I didn't necessarily hate his design. Like, I feel like if you're, <laughs> if if we're comparing it to the source material, then... What? Hey, go, <laughs> I know. Chris, go, I'm going to go there. Come on, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. For a fantastical creature in that, like, in that live action universe, I don't know, I thought it looked okay. I, yeah. I didn't necessarily have any stark problems with it. Mm-hmm. I was going to say, uh, another thing about this fucking movie, uh, no fused animals at any point. Oh, yeah. They well, besides Momo. Yeah, Sokka yeah, did Momo, that. I, the so, flying lemur, who yeah, showed yeah, yeah, up yeah. Two, ti- two times? Yeah, he had no, yeah. I was saying he didn't have any lines, but it, almost, like, it, technically yeah. Momo does a lot of speaking. D, D. Bradley Baker is an amazing voice actor. Yeah. 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 D. Bradley Baker is an incredible so voice actor. Who oh. didn't get, the, the, um, the lemur didn't do anything. He did not. At any point. They Never showed up at one point. Funny. Oh, hey, I'm going to call you Momo, because that's what they called you in the movie. Yeah. Or the show. So, like, but didn't Soka mention, I think he mentioned at the very beginning, like, like the very first scene, that, like, they were, in, before they even met Aang, or Ong, sorry. They were, a lion seal? Yeah, a, 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 a tiger, 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 tiger seal. seal. Is, is, is he he called it a tiger seal. Or... So, I don't no, think no, so. no, 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 there's leopard seals. Mm, yeah, I was, or like, uh, I think, sea lions. I think, <laughs> no, yeah, and sea lions, but I don't think there's a tiger seal. Alright. Uh, yeah, I thought that could be a normal In any thing. case, it wasn't shown on screen, so we can't tell. Yeah. yeah, so you can't take that because it's a show, don't tell medium. Also, I would say, uh, I, I bitched about it while we were watching about the giant Komodo dragons that the Fire Nation was riding yes. on. Yes! They were Komodo rhinos, but then I remembered, wait a minute, the pirate, or not the pirate, the, uh, the, the Fire Nation mercenaries did oh, ride yeah. a giant... Oh, uh, you're talking about, like, June... No, not, no, 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 not June. That no, was no, an Urshu, I believe it was called. Yeah, that was an Ur- that, I love the design of that oh, Urshu. Right, Urshu right. is yeah. great. Yeah, 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 no, no, the um, the, the the random pirates that they ran into. The Rough Riders. Rough Riders. Yeah, they they had giant lizards, right? Kind of, but they, they had, had, they had horns, point, like, though. Oh, no, yeah, those Komodo. Yeah, they those Komodo riders. Okay, no, minus. there was there was at some point I remember giant regular looking lizards. I, I don't know if it was Azula and her crew. There were no. It was Azula and her crew. They did giant was it like, otter seal? Lizards? That's right. Yeah, because there was. I was thinking for a second the like, otter seal or the seal otter eels or something that they mm. rode in the, the finale. Um, they can like run on water apparently or super fast. Oh yeah, the the the, the water lizards like yeah, yeah. yeah, that was cool. Um, yeah, no interesting animals. Another fucking giant fuck up in this movie. <laughs> yeah, Appa's the only weird thing. Yeah. Uh, so something I want to talk about in this film too is Zhao. I <clears throat> hate this version of Zhao. It was very, very bad. Absolutely. So bad. So you're a fuck up to the Fire Nation. Also, remember Ira that you lost your son during a war that you also fucked up? Yeah, remember that. Exposition. Nothing, yeah. Nothing is going to be held against you guys. Yeah. Exposition to, in the form of. Making this entire announcement to the infu- entire fucking army, so all, all, all for the sake, of, yeah, just just for the sake of exposition, and it's like, why are you telling these people all these things? Yeah, Asif I mean, Manvi, that's the actor's name. I find even, him, I love him. He's in a lot of funny stuff. Yeah, but, yeah, going Asif to what Manvi. you were saying, when Xiao was just like, we welcome our guest Prince Zuko, who's not a prince, exposition shitting on Zuko yeah, in front the of entire people. time. But and like, even all of the soldiers were like sitting there like awkward what the yeah, like, fuck uh, are you, what are you even doing, saying? <laughs> but I was gonna say I think I think now thinking back to it, I do believe uh Admiral Zhao's original scene, also I think he was his commander of this movie. Uh he that that scene did kind of play out like that when he like bumped into uh Zuko and Iroh while they were sailing. I do think that scene happened 
in the show almost exactly like that, like him being a dickhead to him, and that's when we first see the Agni Kai flashback, possibly. I'm not 100% sure, but I think that might be how it played yes, out. But they put was, it in this movie. It was he very was a, done, He though. was a dickhead in yeah. the original series, but he was a dickhead that didn't literally go, you're a fuck up. He yeah. actually made you feel disappointed. Like, he was... Yeah. He, he was, put emotion into he it. He put emotion into it. He wanted Zuko to be like, yeah, you made me trying to get back in your dad's good graces, but we all know you're a fuck up. And you yeah. know you're a fuck up too. He yeah. was, and he was a strategist in the show. And, I mean, and they he actually did. showed it more than once and yeah. proved it. They made in the movie they made him look like a complete bumbling fool. In yeah. the show, they made him look like he really knew what he was doing. And it just he kind of under he got a big head and underestimated his his enemies. Yeah. That's where he fucked up in the show. In the movie, he was just a fuck up. Yeah, period. Like every other scene, Not he was back. Yeah, Shout. yeah. Every, every other scene, he was back in front of Ozai saying, oh, "I messed up again, boss. Are right, you doing this time?" Okay, it was a, he was a MacGuffin. Yeah, he took was a MacGuffin like, for Ozai. Guy. Yeah, it was really stupid. One of the worst scenes for me that really made me hate Zhao. Aside from everything else, like I mean, like you said, Tara, he was just a fuck up. Was he had orders from Ozai? To kill the water spirit. He had he had it right in his hand. And then he hesitated. He got the knife out. Getting ready to stab. And it just looked like he was actually conflicted about what was going on. I'm like, no. Yeah, if now? you were actually Zhao, you wouldn't have hesitated. You would have been like, yeah. You know what? We're the Fire Nation. We're strong now. And just stab that. Stab that bitch right there. No, it looked like he was actually trying to listen to Eero saying, no, don't do it. Put it down. And he looked like he was actually having a hard time. I'm like, this isn't Zhao. Like, 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 it's it's one thing to, like, hold hold your prize, hold your goal in your hand, and just kind of, like, revel in it. Like, oh, I have to savor this moment. This is, like, my big ultimate triumph moment. But no, no, Zhao is just like, uh, uh, I don't know, should I do it? Should I do it? (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) I mean, heck, uh, I know we said we weren't going to do it, but the one scene he's in Korra, he... Actually, prides yeah. himself in being Zhao, the Moon Slayer. He says that line. I'm pretty sure he didn't like that in the scene in the original show in the season finale. Yeah, when he's holding the bag, he's like Zhao, the Moon Slayer. I conquered the spirits, and then like, and then he you know, you know firebends at it because that's what you fucking should do in this dumbass show, right? Yeah. Or dumbass movie. Uh, he like firebends it and kills it, and that's like, but he's still very proud of it and very happy, and like they continue the attack, and it's really in, like intense. And this, he wavers his last second for no reason, and then he dies incredibly stupidly. Like, yeah, he <laughs> died. I'm, I mean, I'm glad he drowned in his own bubble. That was really stupid. I mean, that whole fight scene was super... I think this movie has at least a potential for a good fight scenes, but yeah. there's... They sh- fucked that up, too. You have this amazing idea of bending the elements, mm-hmm. and the fucking... Every fight scene is barely any bending. It's all sword fights and spears. Yeah, pushing and jumping. And, and, like, and, and tackling. Like, yeah. and, and, and punching. Don't forget punching. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the, 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 uh, the fight scene... With the blue spirit. Oh my spoilers god! And hey, we get like we we cut to to Ang getting ready to fight, and it's like five minutes straight of Ang doing nothing while everyone surrounding him doing nothing. Uh, yeah, standing around, kind of waving back and forth like their background characters. Right. In a yeah. Game. Like, and even yeah. even when it like, cuts oh, to Zuko, we're fighting. villains. We're villains. Yeah. Right. <laughs> even when it cut to Zuko, nothing was happening. It was. Uh, Tara said it best. Actually, it was like they were taking turns, I was like, like an RPG. They're taking turns. Sharing like, is caring. Someone compared it to Dynasty Warriors when there's like a massive yeah, army like, oh, yeah. and only a few people will attack you at once. Yeah, yeah, that was me. I was yeah, just like, yeah. like the, 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 I, I just got such huge vibes of Dynasty Warriors, where it's just like you have your main character that you're playing, literally a hundred enemies surrounding you, but only like. Ten of them at most are doing anything at any given time. Yeah. It was very <laughs> also, stupid. any scenes like uh, for like in the uh, siege of the North Pole, any scenes and also in general where people were supposed to be fighting each other in the background, they just looked like they were drunk white people dancing. <laughs> yeah. They weren't actually really fighting. They were just I, like, yeah. oh, well, this isn't oh. visual. So <laughs> and and speaking of that, standing around waving back and forth. Other than the is. tackle, nothing can tell the tackle. Yeah. The tackle One was of my favorite amazing. like moments oh. in a fight scene. I yeah. know it's exactly talking about. Like you see, you see, um, like doing these graceful gazelle moves, slow motioning, like a. As Chris put it, a God of War quick time event. Oh, and, then, all, and then all of a sudden, in the middle of this, there's a line of uh, water of, of water tribe and uh, Fire Nation oh. fighting each other. And then 
Aang <laughs> and Aang starts running through. They all stop, literally make a path. Yeah. Aang goes through. Naruto and then, running. like, yeah, yeah, Naruto running. And then, like, one second after that, they all look like, oh, is he through? Okay, good. Goes right back to fighting. Like, I thought you were going to talk about in the Blue Spirit scene when... He's in this weird, what he calls a practice training area. I was gonna say, and then he, he's fight, you know fending off all the the people from getting into him. And one guy gets through, and instead of being like, "Oh, I'm gonna attack Aang," he's looking at the thing like, "Oh, how do I get out? How do I get out, you guys?" Yeah, 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 yeah. he's like, "I should have been in here." As I said during that scene, he's just like, "Yeah, I made it in." What the hell was I supposed to do? Yeah. <laughs> he, also, saying, yeah. he also looked like, you know, when a video game character has a glitch where their bounding box gets stuck yeah. in his nose. No, just kind of walking into a wall. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, his no-clip failed. Yeah. Yes! Yes! yes. So true. <laughs> no, he was a Skyrim NPC. Just... Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, a Skyrim Lord. NPC where they just keep going. Yeah. My Ooh. favorite Skyrim uh, character was a guy who randomly... Flew up into the air and then landed and died from fall damage. And I came up with a fun story in my head that there was an invisible vampire that lifted him up into the air and dropped him. And I was going to avenge Hubert and uh, and, and t- try to help his family out. You named him Hubert. I named him Hubert. I was like, awesome. Awesome. Villager or something? He was just a random villager in a random town and just just shot Are up into the middle. Are you sure of the air. it wasn't a giant that like slammed them? Oh, I'm sure. I was in the middle of a, a city. And he just randomly flew up into the air and landed down in front of me. Nice. Okay. Oh, no, Skyrim podcast. <laughs> what do you guys think other school six is going to be like? Man, I'll tell you, I'm really hoping they'll get some elves, some alternate elves, some red guard, and Kajik. Because you know what? Kajik? I'm sorry, who? Kajik. Uh, ka what? Kajik. Kajik. <laughs> and with the nope, T. I, with the I, I said Kajik. The <laughs> yes, they look like the cat people, but they look I'm just a little more canine. <laughs> oh, you know, you know. And they don't say. sneak, they sneck. <laughs> oh, through the grass. Hey, <laughs> just remember no step on sneck. <laughs> no, we're distracted. Yeah. Um, I mean, again? can you blame yeah. us? This <laughs> movie is. We, we literally. Hot I feel one that we garbage. didn't actually have an actual summary of this fucking movie. But like, like we said, yeah, we'll watch Empire Island Players. What summary can you <laughs> give to this movie? I mean, you can talk very, about what yeah, happened. It's very, very quick. A lot is happening, but nothing is happening because it's all very boring, badly. Like I said, on every single aspect of like, somehow this movie, the acting is bad, the visual effects. I, I can't remember at the time if they were good or not. No, they don't look no. very good. They're very, the bending is very, the earth bending is very blurry, and the water bending is always in a ball or a tentacle, and that is it. Um, the fire bending is very, very slow. Um, and also the flame particles, because particle animation is yeah. what you get for dust, um, water, uh, fluids of any kind, and also fire type effects. It's all yeah. particle animation. It was like whatever engine they used was just. It wasn't rendering out in the lighting correctly either. It just looked very strange. At times, it was either too sharp or too blurry. I don't. It, the yeah. water was like too sharp. It didn't look like it belonged in the background, and then the earth was too blurry. And they were probably saying, "Oh, it'd be dusty because it's earth." But oh, like, God. I mean, kind of. But at the same time, when visually speaking, earth is supposed to be solid in order for people to see and believe solidity. You need. You need less of the blurriness. Maybe when it initially comes out of the ground, you could have some of that. But when it's flying through the air, you don't want it obscured from the viewer's sight. Yeah. And, yeah. like, the water droplets were always huge, which made it look more gelatinous than yeah. it actually mm-hmm. was. It's like, that's not water. Let's just say that <sighs> they use too many motions for... Like, they use no bending. for, like, too little bending. Well, yeah, but yeah. that wasn't what I was talking about. I was talking about the visuals. But still, it's... They yeah. made such grand, sometimes, motions for such little bending, and for the bending to be horrible, it... <clears throat> Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. But yeah. I, yeah. It's, it was every aspect. Like I will say, yeah, I agree with both of you. The, yeah. The the bending was bad. It looked bad in terms of the effects and looked bad in terms of the actual like strength of it. But then the acting is bad. The bending and fighting. The fighting scenes are terrible. The pacing of the movie is so rushed 
the tone of it is so boring. There's nothing. This movie was like so. Like we we sat here. I don't even know if an hour and forty minutes passed. It was so fucking dumb. Yeah. I feel angry about it, but I don't yeah, know. it was it was so nothing and so like boring and quick and stupid and bad. I mean, ironically, I, I the, can't even think of a fucking uh, uh, cream of the crop fucking air freshener or uh, the fucking other one we have for this show. Bottom of the barrel. Bottom of the barrel. I, we have to do that at some point. We're already at almost an hour and thirty minutes. Jesus Christ. This is already a little more, like, longer than a lot of our other episodes. So, oh, I want to say one thing about the bending, and I think this is also a lot of the problems with the film. And it was kind of one of my, again, going back to, ironically, Resident Evil 2 Apocalypse. It was the most, re- it was the most uh, like recent uh, listen to episode released by the time of this recording. <laughs> yeah, but I like, so like the, one of my problems with the liquors was they didn't have as much interaction. But even then, like the CG in that movie had yeah. a little bit more weight. And that's one thing I liked about the Nemesis yeah, being the live action. Positive was the effects. Yeah, he had, it was good effects. And I felt the weight of the characters and interactions. In this movie, nobody felt like they were interacting with the elements they were bending or being hit by them. Yeah. You know, everything was just... You know, you could tell that people probably thought what they were doing was good, but then the effects they put in were so terrible and the staging must have been so terrible that they had no idea what they were doing. Yeah, like, no no bending seemed dangerous at any point. There was probably no person running with the rock when the six people picked it up. I would guarantee you there was no person in a green suit holding a fake rock. You know, like, when you see nowadays, like, the Avengers, you know, yes. when Mark Ruffalo or, or Josh Brolin were acting, they have on the suit where the height it of their the character yeah. to adjust the yeah. eyesight. Yeah. So they at least had something. They didn't have a, a rock to show you what was going to go, mm-hmm. you know, moving or Yeah, whatever. I was going to say, I just saw the, the Suicide Squad, a fucking amazing movie, 100 out of 100%. It's amazing. Uh, during the filming, King Shark is a very, very large figure. Yes. The actor they had playing him, uh, Steve Agee, who's an amazing comedian, had, like, a full-on, like, gray suit on with, like, a... A head thing showing like there I'm this this Where tall. It would be, yeah. yeah, what it would look like. And yeah, this movie had such like bad effects and the bending was so long and the like it didn't look actually at all. It was like it, every single aspect of this movie was very poorly it done. It was more like it was shocking. <laughs> I was watching children in their first day of karate class. Yeah, everyone was doing <laughs> oh very long goodness, katas yeah. to do very little uh, slow bending. And the editing was, was also so weird. The editing was also complete garbage because they had to slow down every um. Ama- it's it's one of my problems with America's Got Talent is when they have these big trick, they slow it down and they speed right back up and slow it down. And it, ironically, you know, versus some films where they cut super hard, them showing it so slow almost remove remove the disbelief that the actions we're going to have. <laughs> Seeing punching and fighting in real time is, I feel like, sometimes more impressive than a slow motion punch. Yeah, I, I bet there was a cut when they were doing the digital effects for this movie where every single one of those punches and kicks they were doing in their katas had some kind of element flying around doing something. I bet it probably looked too horrible or too like bad, or it was too distracting, or you couldn't see the person doing it or something like that. I bet there was a cut of this movie where the bending was more energetic because it was fucking slow as shit in this. But it just didn't work or it was too expensive or it didn't look good enough. And they stepped it back to the fucking slow, very unthreatening thing we see in the fucking movie. Uh, yeah, but yeah, everything bad about this movie. Do you know what this movie was? This movie... Actually, no, it's not even. It's not even. I was going to say, this was the elephant ejaculation from Freddy Got Fingered. Yeah. But not even... But even oh, then, for there it. were some comedic moments in that. that. Was, yeah. And there was nothing... That was the like, the, the, the elephant come <laughs> did something funny. <laughs> like, there was something funny in that, at you least. You basically say this whole movie is the bottom of the barrel. Yeah. Pretty much. But uh, yeah. I think I, we, have to, we gotta try. Really fucking positive. So, I, I will try to think of a... Uh, uh, cream of the Crop is the unironic enjoyment. Cream, yes, Cream of the Crop is something we un- uh, unironically enjoyed. I really struggle. I guess it's Lula, never mind. I, I, I the very yeah. very <laughs> she had She had the, the look. look. Yeah. She like, had she the is crazy going, she is going to go She crazy. had the manic look that we all know and love. Of course. The yeah. other unironic thing that was actually enjoyable was seeing all the costume designs. Yes. yes. That's yeah, just, yeah, yeah. I feel so bad for those costume designers because they did such sometimes. a great job. All the little intricate yet, details and some of the costumes. It was wonderful. They needed some color. They needed some color. To I thought, like I said, bit, Ola's but... outfit looked really, really good. I really liked it. Um, for me, one of the uh, unironic things, I agree with you on this, Ed, is after the uh, after the, the uh, moon spirit gets stabbed, I Eero going all like doing fire bending with no like with no uh, fire at all. That was an awesome scene. Like you said, it's like when Eero became Iro. That actually was because a lot of these people know that one one of my all time favorite characters in the original show and a little bit in Korra 
was Iroh. He's like the best character aside from Toph and Bolin. He's pretty but, but I mean, like this entire thing, we got this random like, I yeah, Middle Eastern kind of. But at, for, when I first saw him, I thought he was white and Nordic. Yeah, like, yeah that's the way he looked to me. Nordic? And then <laughs> he might the, mo- the moment he did that one scene. It was like, yeah, this is what we should have had the yeah. entire time, kind of thing. This was, it. it I you don't know. know. Ira was is still going. It's still like giving off pretty good like Zen sugar bugs. grandpa. <laughs> you were talking about. <laughs> yeah. You were talking yeah. about sugar, <laughs> sugar grandpa vibes. I mean, I, I admit it. I, I did that. admit. I let him fuck me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he's pretty hot. Uh, but no, like I, I was saying, I, I never got to get mine, by the way, yeah, yeah. Uh, which was what Ben said, you know, because I will say, you know, it's, it's talked about, you know, every film, Terry mentioned every film is a story, and mm-hmm. and the t- part of the twist is is setting it up, you know, using the expectation. They set up firebenders can only bend with fire, so it paid off. All that buildup paid off at that moment right there, mm-hmm. and it had weight and it had power to it. He didn't do anything with it. As yeah. much, it was just intimidating. Yeah, that was annoying. you know, it was intimidated a bunch of people, and they but it was a powerful it. moment in a garbage film, and that is the one moment I think I very, very much actually enjoyed. Chris, did you have any moment that you generally thought was decent on its own merit? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you think you think that's gonna stop after this recording? You're you're wrong. <laughs> Damn it. What do you think my last it. words on this earth are going to be? Uh, <laughs> was it decent on its own merit? <laughs> on its own merit? <laughs> what do you guys think? I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I love you, my family. Jeez. <laughs> I love my family on their own merit. <laughs> <laughs> You're decent on your own merit. <laughs> but, but Chris, yeah. yeah what was so what your, is your uh, own? Cream of the crap. You know what? Honest, Sorry. Cream of the crap. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I guess that I unironically enjoyed I, really nothing. <laughs> like I don't know. I, don't, I, don't I, mean, I mean the 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 fight. I mean the costumes. The you know, were, were pretty cool. I guess. Uh, I mean I, I I didn't I wasn't able to like fully fully enjoy them or I I didn't notice them enough to fully enjoy them. Um you know yeah that that fire scene with with Ira was pretty good. <laughs> that, that was a pretty cool moment. Wow. Basically, the most Stop bringing down on the movie, Chris. <laughs> what? <laughs> After all that praise you heaped on it earlier? <laughs> what do you mean praise? You called it. I the, made one the the fucking <laughs> comment, you ass. Hey, you're right. You're right, Chris. You made one comment, and look where we are because of it. An hour and a half later. <laughs> technically, <laughs> three hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like technically three hours. Yeah, exactly. yeah three hours of our life is spent on this movie. This episode has to be. Has to be cut down at some point. Oh, no. Nope. No, oh, no, my no, God. No, no. Yeah, he, he does. You're going to force all four people to listen to this whole thing. You should thing. try to hear some of the like, hour and a half episodes of me and Ben like, mm-hmm. talking oh, about yeah. like, what the Star Wars episode we did. It's like an hour and 50. Oh, my God. <laughs> I got very angry at you, oh, you, you guys. Recording? Eventually, we're going to no, no, uh, yeah, we're gonna do a movie garbage <laughs> with Ben because eventually uh, I'm going to uh, yell at you both for that one. We'll do it another time. But, back on But, yeah, it was, yeah, but it was, yeah, okay, Chris, yeah, so you learned your lesson. You said, you said this was the cream of the crop. Yeah. Now we ha- now, now I know the air freshener. We keep changing every fucking air episode. We're never going to remember what the fuck one it is. Yeah, uh, air freshener. So this is ironic. Mo- yeah. uh, this ironic love it, which I'm going to go off, start us off. It was the it was when the moon came back and that dude just <laughs> hard tackled the soldier. I'm not kidding. I was laughing for a minute straight. I could tell you what happened after that because oh, I was God. dying. Wait, are we, are we on air freshener or cream of the crop? We're on air, air freshener. freshener. Okay. Just we, we just did yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. So in the air, uh, fresh enough. Yeah, I'll go and say, obviously, uh, tie between that fucking Earthbender scene. <laughs> I, it's, a de- it's a point of deep shame and enjoy for me because it's so fucking terrible <laughs> and funny. But I love Earthbending. But then also, and Naruto running through those fucking idiot <laughs> soldiers. And them all stopping for two seconds and then continuing to fight. <laughs> was also very fucking funny and stupid. Like, like, like they didn't even <laughs> turn to like go toward any... They, they just continued fighting each other. Like, nothing happened. <laughs> it was so stupid. <laughs> Um, yeah, for me, not only was it the air bend, uh, the the earth bending scene, not only uh, or, or the uh, the Naruto running, <laughs> and you, Ed, made that tackle scene all the better. But honestly, it's the fact that there is no way around it. 
UA has a dick in it. <laughs> <laughs> UA was literally, like, the moment that scene came, I literally, like, just blurted out loud, penis! <laughs> I'm like, I read an evil too when I shouted out boobs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, like, that, that is, like, the top one for me. Because I, I've heard about it, and it has been a while since I've seen it. The moment I saw the back of the head, I'm like, there's no way around this. I want to say that the biggest dick we've seen in any of the movies we've done right? so far... Well, I don't know, that elephant in Freddy Got Fingered. Once <laughs> <Pretty bad. laughs> again, bring us to our Freddy Got Fingered moment. Yeah, we have to bring it up every fucking episode. Because <laughs> the movie is so goddamn good, we're going to eventually have to do another... Yeah, we have to force all of you to watch that fucking awful thing, too. Oh, no. One wow. movie. Awful? Oh. That movie. Awfully great. Yeah, I <laughs> masturbated to that film five times. <laughs> That's more than we needed to know. Oh, God. Oh, for me, it was This uh, is a kid-friendly podcast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the air pressure moment was, Because uh, <laughs> <laughs> when I first heard it, I didn't realize what was happening. I thought there was, like, something that going off in the kitchen. I didn't think it was real. And then I noticed it was, and they were banging their spears out of the <laughs> And then it got helped. Was it who was it who said that they were doing this? Oh, Chris! Hand <laughs> <laughs> motion looks like he's jacking off. Like every time Chris was doing that, I like moved his hand like over here, my friend. And then Chris was just be like, "No." <laughs> you put a real Tom Green as a farmer. Oh, <laughs> Lord. Dad, I'm a farmer. I'm a farmer, Pop. I'm a farmer. Uh, so, Chris. <laughs> yeah, my, my air freshener moment was also the <laughs> Haley. Uh, I mean, if it's I, one of I ours. Mean, I mean, like you guys kind of took all the good ones. Hey, Kaylee. But I think my favorite ones of all time is just the fact that Katar just looks so pained throughout the whole yeah. movie. Yeah. Oh, she's a real no matter what, she looks so pained. Like, I can't believe I'm doing this movie. Yeah. You, you know what? Honestly, I'm surprised. I thought it was going to be, um, uh, Sexy Grandpa. <laughs> no, oh, yeah. that's, that's just my general thoughts of, I, of Ira on this movie. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's just Sugar Daddy Grandpa. So, finally, we have the bottom of the barrel. Which is basically the whole movie. Yeah, the whole fucking but movie. But I guess yeah. we have to pick a specific thing, don't we? I mean, this movie, <laughs> yeah, I would... go let, around. I yeah. would say, the, just making it the full movie does work for me. It does. Everybody does agree. Cause that, yeah. It was a miserable, I mean, bad experience. If I really had to choose one, it was literally, like, all the random times. Especially the ending before you see Azula. Just all of the freaking yeah, exposition like, like, dunk <laughs> going on. No, the exposition <laughs> dunk. It's like, it's like, it's it's like so about... Half an hour, 45 minutes of nothing. And then 10 minutes, exposition dump, nothing. Especially the, the ending. Mm. When Ozai's like, this happened, this happened, this happened. Th-. We know we were watching it. And now, Sozin's got a comment. That's final season shit. Mm. And then this and this and this. I'm like, stop the exposition dumps. The, for me, the t- lack of time was also really an issue. Because like... Why do they, you know, they don't even apparently come up with going to the Northern Water Tribe until the whole Haru ep- version thing. Mm-hmm. They're like, oh, this is going to be powerful waterbenders, you know, and then all of a sudden they cut to and now you're in the Northern, up north, and then two seconds later they're, you know, everyone's moved on to other places, and then they're in the north for weeks. It's like, yeah. there's no sense of time, and it's... A quick montage after rescuing those earthbender villages of like the, oh. them going to three other, three other sets that look the exact same. I feel like and then saying we started a rebellion. Let's keep going. Yeah, right? <laughs> they so they good. told us everything and showed us nothing. Well, that's oh. that's the other bad part of this movie because it was so rushed and so basically expedited. None of the characters had the time to grow and learn to love each other. None of them had the time to go through some of their minor character arcs, and it. What was gained from each character in this film? Nothing. 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 No one had any character. Right, and that's why I like, I mean... Uh, that, that's why I, her paint expression. Mm. Yep. That's our bottom of the barrel. That's, the characters had no flavor. Yeah, mm-hmm. and that's why I tend to favor series over movies, because they have Absolutely. more time to flesh out characters There are great movies that do are able to do that in, in small moments. I mean, the, there are moments in this film that you could have done that. They could have taken these, des- these elements that they put in there and created something... If there was just better direction, yeah, I mean, mm. he did a very, very well terrible done. direction. There was no connection between these characters. I mean, the fight scene between Katara and Zuko near the end, 
like these two people were just at motioning towards each other. This is supposed to be a big showdown. Zuko was inches away from something that's going to regain his honor, which we've been told about through this whole film. Katara has been um, trained for weeks to master waterbending, and it was nothing. Both characters did nothing. Yeah. She got bitch slapped into a tree by fire and didn't even catch on fire. Yeah, it was very stupid. It was so dumb. This movie's exhausting. Of course, as all podcasting, we're both very exhausted at the end of this. Um, um, if, there's, um, if there's one final thought I have about this movie, yeah. to quote the Ember Island players, Look, it's the last airbender. M. Night Shyamalan's attempt at making a great series into a live-action movie. Eh, let's keep flying. <laughs> yeah, let's skip it. <laughs> uh, but well, I was going to say, uh, before, I, I didn't even look up reviews. I, I found a pretty long one, actually, that's oh, God, pretty oh, good. Oh, Lord. No, no. I was going to say, um, <laughs> it's, I mean, it's long. Do, but I was going to say, before we do reviews, do we do the uh, comparing to everything else we've seen? Yeah. Um, I'd like to give my uh, bottom of the barrel first. Oh, yes. Okay. So my bottom of the barrel moment was toward the beginning of the film where uh, where Iro takes Ong and gives him a test to see oh, if, yes! if he's the Avatar. Never mentioned this. We need okay. to talk about this. Okay, so, so, he takes, so Iro takes a candle, and a lit candle, puts it in front of Aang, and the fire just elevates. Aang doesn't do anything. We do not yeah. see him bend anything. And then anything. it goes towards him. And it goes towards him. And then, so then, I guess that means... Apparently, he can bend fire, even though he's done literally nothing. Yeah. So, Iroh takes the candle away, uh, pours a, a bit of water on the table in front of Ong, and then the water all just magically coagulates into uh, just an orb puddle of water in the center of the table. And then he puts a rock in front of him, and the rock just tilts up. Yeah. And that and that's like like Ong literally has done nothing, no movements of any kind, at least not that the audience has seen, but this is supposed to uh, basically be the test to show he's the out the avatar, right? And mind you, this was at the very beginning before he even started thinking about learning how to water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like then late so I'm thinking like okay, so apparently in this universe a be- a bending is just something that happens to you uh, mat- automatically. Just like, where, no matter where, uh, or like the avatar of power is just so, so like big and and like you know, uh, just so grand and epic that the elements just bend themselves whenever he's around them. <laughs> apparently, because then later, like a, like ten minutes later, we fought. We get a bit of exposition that says like a. Uh, oh, uh, I only know air bending. I don't know how to bend any of the other elements. And I just, I had to pa- had to pause the video and be like, well, then what the fuck was that at the beginning? Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck was that trial? Like, how did you do any of that? He also, I hated too. You know, again, I know we're we're judging this movie on its own merit, but in the show, Aang was a gifted bender, like right out the bat. <clears throat> yeah. You know, and in this one. I had struggles with water bending, and he never actually, until the very end, shows to be a, be able to water bend too much. Yeah, like, did he only water bend when he was in the Avatar state? Uh, no, he did on that that weird gazelle jump scene where it, well, and, he like, um, jumped over to the one dude and like bottomed out. Yeah, and there was oh a yeah, scene don't where forget, he was, like forget. standing at the coast and he was like trying to do the tentacles and he like remembered yeah. the Yato, and then he almost made an entire like tidal wave come in. Yeah. Yeah, there was that too. But other than that, that was yeah. dumb. Oh god. Well, well, that I guess, really sucks shit. I got <laughs> a, I got a review here from uh, Amazon from Annie, titled "Even Worse Now Than Before." Oh lord! Oh lord! <laughs> wow, this movie is literal garbage. <laughs> I hadn't seen it since I was around twelve years old, so a good solid ten years went by. I recently rewatched the whole series again for the third time and couldn't resist in watching this. Somehow, I had some hope that I could see this differently. No, no, no. There are so many things fundamentally wrong with this adaptation that is embarrassing. It is obvious that no one that was responsible for this film was an Avatar fan because I didn't see one thing that reminded me of the animated show. Reasons why this movie sucks. One, pronunciation. Ang. Alvatar, Soka, Eero, honestly, WTF! I don't give a flying foot that the director insists that they say it in the traditional manner. Say it how the freaking show did. Two, 
Where was Sokka's humor and incredible intelligence when it comes to planning and tactics? Three. Who is even Aang in this movie? Yep, there was not <laughs> one single expression of his character. No compassion, peace, playfulness, humor, etc. Katara? No, no. That girl was not even remotely close to the strong, independent, caring, and loving person from the show. Five, there was not a wise or humorous bone in Uncle Iroh's body. Yeah. Six, can we all just agree, every character in this movie doesn't even deserve to be called a character? They might as well be sticks in the mud for all I care. Every character in this animated series was disrespected by this adaptation. Seven. <laughs> White people! <laughs> we should have just like read this whole thing first. I know. Yeah. It's, it's, it's literally our whole review. Yeah. yeah, it's how far it is. Yeah. Um, sorry, not sorry, but every character in the animated show is from some form of Asian descent. You couldn't even get that right? Eight. The entire movie was disjointed and so many crucial moments were cut out. I, you cannot fit an entire an, an Avatar season into one movie. I don't care how much you try to convince me. There is far too much content. Nine. Where is the flipping bending? Yeah. Everyone is throwing punches and jabs instead of bending. What bender thinks, I'm a firebender, but I'm not going to use it. Instead, I'm just going to punch people. Also, can we just acknowledge that it took about 10 moves to perform one bending move? I could easily run up and hit a bender right on their head while they perform one single move. 10. When was it a thing that firebenders have no have to have some source of fire in order to bend? No. For the love of Iro, no. Hey, question. 11. I'm about to say, how many are there? Yeah, this okay, last yeah. one. We're almost done. 11. Was Team Avatar even a thing? I think not. How many words did Katara, Aang, <clears throat> and Sokka say to each other? Yeah. Little to none. They might as well be strangers. I could probably go on for basically eternity <laughs> or an hour and 45 minutes. <laughs> oh my god, we went longer than the movie. Yeah. <laughs> but this movie doesn't deserve any more of my time. This series is one of the greatest of all time. This movie could have been one of the greatest movies of all time. The content and creativity is all in the animated series, yet they royally destroyed every sacred piece of it. I hope someday that the story has a, another chance. Mm. I hope one day that someone who is a true <clears throat> fan will do this series justice by making another movie, or even a well-developed TV show. <laughs> Maybe Netflix. I just added that part. For now, don't bother with this trash. Rewatch the series. Watch Korra. Listen to the Action Tune Bros podcast. <laughs> or read the comics. This is a waste of your time. Who was that? Annie. Annie. I'm well, say, yeah, Annie from, <laughs> well, Annie from, uh, from the Amazon. <laughs> wherever you're from, if you're actually, like, if you're one of the four listeners of this, you, you can rest easy knowing that all of us here right now agree with you yeah. on everything. Absolutely. She put all of our points very concisely. <laughs> she did. Every single aspect of this piece of shit movie that was a horrible waste of time. <laughs> now, yeah, but Ed, you and me need to rank this against all the other horse shit we've seen on this fucking podcast. <laughs> I um, mean, number is, one is... it the bottom? It's the bottom. Because number one is still Freddy Got Finger. Yes. Followed by, I want to say... Uh, man, I, I, uh, uh, Wally's Wonderland. Oh, yeah. Well, it's, well it's, Willie. Willy's, Willy's Wonderland. Oh, yeah. That, that fucking movie. <laughs> yeah, Willy's Wonderland then is Troll definitely two, number two. Um, Troll 2, Fantasy Island, I believe. Fantasy Island then, and then fucking uh, Banana, Banana Splits. Splits. <laughs> and then fucking Resident Evil 2. Resident Evil 2, and then this piece of shit on the fucking bottom. I mean, Resident Evil 2 ended up getting beat two episodes later. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Because at the very least, it had some decent action and special effects. This yeah, movie yeah. couldn't even get that right. All right, well, all of our guests, we're glad you could have joined us. Yes, thank you, everybody. Any, it's good uh, to be here. Thanks for having us on. Plugs, go well, around well, the we, we can talk about our next movie? I was going to say, do we do that now or after We do that plugs? now. Now? Okay, well, since uh, this is all Chris's fault, <laughs> and the ones before that were all Ed's fault, now it's my turn to pick a movie. Now, and since it's a good thing we have a guest here, because one of our guests here, my co-host from Action Dune Bros, Yo. will be joining us 
uh, and any of you others are welcome to join if you want. We are going to enjoy the four-hour extravaganza Zack Snyder cut of Justice League. Oh, yeah. So set, a, set aside oh. an afternoon, because <laughs> oh, <laughs> four hours. Help me. No, you're doing it. <laughs> <laughs> this is an action Doom Bros tie-in. <laughs> no, 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 hey, but to be fair, I have actually been interested, and yeah. I say that word lightly, yeah, in yeah. the Snyder Cup, because I have heard actual good things, surprisingly yeah. enough, about I mean, it. It's going to be hard for me, because I've actually seen the original, and I don't remember anything about it. That's so. probably okay. Dude, we all <laughs> watched the original. We were all in this room. We were drinking. Room. Oh, no, wait, was that Batman vs. Superman? That was Batman vs. Superman. Well, Batman vs. Superman, we were, but we were in this room when we watched Justice League. We were? Yeah, we oh, were. I don't remember that. I don't, I don't remember <laughs> Wait, I can't, I can not, All right, so yeah, let's do uh, plugs here. So yeah, so the four-hour Snyder Cut version of Justice League is going to yeah. be our next film. Oh yeah. So plugs, uh, t- Keely, do you got any plugs? Social media, any product you want people to check out? Hell no. No, right. Tara. <laughs> well, you're gonna go in the order, damn. <laughs> Chris, what the hell are you doing? Uh, yeah, same. No. Yeah, I know. <laughs> we just like, had to get you to say it. <laughs> uh. Someday in the future, but as of right now, no. Maybe I'll be on another thing What about later. your magazine? The magazine, yeah, but yeah. unless you're getting married, I don't know if you care about it. Northeast Ohio Weddings Magazine. Mm-hmm. Just search that on, on uh, I know we're on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for sure, and also, uh, what's the one where you get jobs? LinkedIn. Uh, LinkedIn. 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 Okay. LinkedIn. LinkedIn. Monster? Monster. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I'm an intern there, but... Unless you're getting married, I don't see why you would. And in Northeast Ohio. <laughs> well, I mean, you could use the oh, website yeah, yeah, for yeah, other yeah. things too. Yeah, true. So, well, yeah, check that out. Do you have any social medias? Do you want? Uh, none that I really post anything on that anybody's going to care about. Yeah. Um, right now, thanks to being burnt out by work. Oh, by real my quick, job. real quick, Ben, do you have any plugs? Who's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so who's talking? <laughs> no, 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 you're right. You, you're right. I, I I stepped out of turn. Um, uh, if other than the fact that I've been burnt out at work and I want to do other projects, as of right now, my uh, my friend Matt over here mm-hmm. and I we have a podcast called the Action Tune Bros, oh, yeah. um, where we just right now currently we are doing episode two uh, of season two of um, uh, Shira. Shira. Sorry, actually season it's five. season it's season one of Shira. My one. bad. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we're about to start doing some Castlevania Netflix style of that. And yes, yes it was, but we'll say that towards the end. Uh, your turn for your plugs. Oh, jeez, I don't know if I have a Forgotten Minotaur King, but now available on Amazon.com. With, Enjoy the po- yeah, with, with a wonderful forward by Ed Babachek and beautiful cover art by Tara, my friend. Uh, also, check out the, the uh, freaking Forgotten Minotaur King podcast. Don't be a sucker like Ben trying to buy an audiobook version of it when it's already free. Uh, Action Tune Bros podcast with my dope co-host Ben. Yep. Awesome as heck. Uh, covering tons of things. Also, speaking of Twitter, mm-hmm. my, uh, I'm Matthew Lewis P on Twitter for Matthew Lewis Podcast. Ben, I've tagged you in like a thousand Action Tune Bros posts on Twitter. Check your fucking Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, uh, I have a Twitter? Yes, you do. I tag you all the time, <laughs> damn it. Uh, then, let's see. Yeah, I already fucked on my shit. Um, my, uh, upcoming new sequel series to The Forgotten Midtour King currently in the works. Maybe an audio drama, maybe just a uh, book. We'll find out. Uh, more details on that on future episodes. Uh, Ed. <laughs> uh, so you can find me on Twitter at Movie Garbage or at Ed underscore Bob and Check. I think it's the underscore. I always forget to check. <laughs> I say it every time, so by now you probably know if you listen. Um, obviously, you can hear me here on Movie Garbage, the podcast, uh, which we post on YouTube and other apps occasionally. Yeah. Um, and I'm looking to around... Probably later this year, do a Twitch stream of me doing an Emerald Kaizo Nuzlocke run. Oof. So if you want to watch the opening of that a billion times, I'm about to say uh, uh, streaming from Switch or from Twitch. Twitch. No, I'm no, oh, it's a uh, no. PC? Emerald Kaizo is a, a ROM hack. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah. So it's basically they take all of the Pokemon, they make their their stats as high as they can go. They give them an actual competitive move set. They take away, they change up every Pokemon so they're actually viable. They add little patches. They change all that stuff. And opponents will actually try. If they see a kill, they will go for it. Now here's my question about this Kaizo. Is it a randomized or no? No, it's okay. not a randomized. Interesting. Um, I've never heard of a Kaizo Pokemon. Right? Yeah, I'm not sure. I already knew about the it's Mario a, version. It, 
<laughs> yeah, it's um super. So I've learned about this from uh, Wolf Glick, mm-hmm. who I haven't finished it. I'm watching. He's he's uh, me into the Elite Four, which yeah. is like no small feat because like one of the uh, there's like in double battles you can't predict as easily. You need to pu- pull some RNG. Uh, certain uh, trainers like uh, Maxi and Archie will have like uh, Reggie's uh, legendary Pokemon. Every Pokemon is basically available in this. Um, they added in like so they they add, you can evolve Pokemon too. Thankfully, it's like Alakazam and Golem you could get through just training and all that. They removed all that stuff, so it's actually possible. They actually made certain Pokemon viable. Nice. Um, Your Twitch channel? Do you remember the name yet? Uh, oh yes, it is. Uh, <laughs> fa- it's Father Bohawk. Nice. <laughs> yeah, because I was originally Mister Bohawk, but I'm like that doesn't work. I'm a dad. I'm a father, and you know it's yeah, a little original. So I'm going with Father Bohawk. Alright, sure. And I think I have an underscore underneath those. I gotta figure that out. <laughs> There's an underscore somewhere in there. Maybe. It's underscore potentially. Uh, Alright, that's it for this episode. Uh, it's way longer. This might be our longest now, officially. We I didn't mean, even fucking summarize this piece of shit. I mean, did we? <laughs> if you've seen the show, it's that, but like, bad. make every dumb decision and cut out all the interesting bits. Make it bad. And if you're new to Avatar The Last Airbender or anything, avoid this movie. Oh, avoid it with your life. I do have a message, actually, for one of my co-workers, who I'm not going to name, because I don't want to call out people, and I don't think he's ever going to listen to this, but still... Um, I remember him, and I remember him because he claimed he enjoyed this movie. Yeah. No, you're wrong. <laughs> no. Bad. <laughs> also, just a reminder that Chris, you once said that this movie was recent, or it decent. <laughs> 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 Quite recent. <laughs> yes. Was yeah, decent ago. on its own merit. Boy. Do you stand by that statement? Wait, did you say that? Boy, it's, boy, it sure <laughs> is a hot bit since I've been reminded of that. <laughs> do, you, <laughs> do you stand by that statement? The question of do I stand by that statement that I made a few weeks ago. <laughs> but the, uh, the result is... No, my mind's changed. This is this is garbage. <laughs> <laughs> on its own merit. On its own merit. Like, on the, compared to the show, it's dog shit. And on its own merit... It is also dog shit. All right. Well, okay. now we solved that mystery. <laughs> All right. So that was a, a good close. three and a half hour Marvin spent. Uh, Marvin garbage. <laughs> <laughs> movie garbage is never uh, above uh, making people feel bad about what they say. <laughs> <laughs> watch what you say uh, around me, apparently. <laughs> I will make you and multiple of our friends watch a awful, awful movie. And make more than talk three about hours it. of yes. this thing in our lives. All right, uh, that's going to be it for this episode. That it will be. Boy, I hope I don't lose the sound file. <laughs> anyway, let's, let's say... And oof, my goof. goof.